And Florida State against Miami has all you could ask for. And the Orange Bowl is the backdrop. And the fact that one of these teams could see its national championship hopes evaporate on opening night. And you have college football at its best. Welcome to ESPN Full Circles College Football, presented by Dish Network. Tonight, it's number 11, Florida State, at number 12, Miami, in one of the great rivalry games in all of sports. The Orange Bowl. seen a lot of history since it opened in 1937. Another chapter could be written tonight with a winner vaulting into the nation's top 10. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Todd Blackledge. It's great to have you with us. Holly Rowe will join us shortly. When Miami joined the ACC, a lot of their fans thought they would dominate this conference. That hasn't happened. In fact, in each of the last two years, they've lost three games. That's bad for Miami, and it culminated in an embarrassment, a 43-42-3 loss in the Peach Bowl. That brought in new coaches, a new system. They get to test it against Florida State. Well, Larry Coker really shook up his staff. Six new coaches, four on the offensive side of the ball, including new offensive coordinator Rich Olson, who was here with Dennis Erickson in the early 90s. Last 10 years he spent in the NFL, and he brings in an aggressive attacking style. He hopes to attack the whole field, and he has some good weapons to work with, starting with his quarterback, Kyle Wright, who will begin his second year as the starter. The big emphasis with Kyle Wright during this summer, getting the ball out of his hands hands quicker. When it comes to running the football, they were without Tyrone Moss tonight, who was suspended the starting tailback. Charlie Jones filled in great for him last year when Moss went down with the injury. He will be the feature back tonight. The main go-to guy in the passing game, tight end Greg Olson. In this game last year, nine catches for 137 yards. FSU is a team that once had 14 consecutive finishes in the nation's top five, but not lately. And last year was a low point. They lost five games. They know to get better. The offense has to improve. It has to improve, and it should improve. Two reasons. Number one, the offensive line, which has been decimated by injuries the last two years, the healthiest that it's been in a long while. Secondly, they've got a young quarterback in Drew Weatherford who really got tested under fire last year and did a lot of great things. Without a running game, he did some good things, but Drew Weatherford is a student of the game. He went back and looked at all 18 of his interceptions, and he knows this year it has to be a better decision-making year for him. Lorenzo Booker should help that running game. He's waited for four years to be the feature back in this offense and the go-to guy in the Florida State pass game, Chris Davis. He was the leading receiver last year. Over the summer, he and Weatherford developed an even greater chemistry. Now, both teams we expect to have dominating defenses. Yeah. So what do we look like, we'll look for on offense to see who might have the edge in this game? I think there are two things to pay attention to. Number one, which one of these two quarterbacks will show the greatest game management, good decision making and protection of the ball. And number two, which offensive line can control the line of scrimmage? That shows up in running the football and pass protection. About three hours ago, the weather was absolutely ugly. Let's get an update. Here's Holly Rowe. Thank you very much. We're waiting on both ball clubs here at the Orange Bowl. Miami will come out of the helmet. Larry Coker leads out the Canes. You can feel it in the air, can't you?
rivalry covered on ESPN's Full Circle. We'll have the traditional game telecast here on ESPN. On ESPN2, you'll see the game like you've never seen it before. A multi-screen presentation that features ESPN's primary game telecast and will be surrounded by seven additional camera angles, including isolations of Bobby Bowden, Larry Coker, and both quarterbacks. But we're not done there. ESPNU will televise the game via our Skycam angle and will feature the unique commentary of ESPN Radio's Colin Cowherd. Additional coverage can be found on ESPN 360, ESPN Radio, ESPN Deportes, ESPN.com, mobile ESPN. And when the game is all said and done, turn to ESPN News for our post-game extra. We've got it covered. Florida State and Miami from the Orange Bowl. The kickoff is next. Any person that follows football knows about the FSU-Miami rivalry. It's up. Uh, all those games that you watched growing up, you're about to be a part of it. You're getting ready to be a part of history. That's why kids, you know, come to Miami and go to Florida State is to play in big time games like this. Urban's free. Touchdown Miami. This is Warwick for Connor Show. It's like great games, close games, blowouts, and we get Hall of Famers. Once that ball is kicked, it's just you, your opponent, and whoever's heart is going to be the biggest. State rivalry. What else do you want on a Monday night? Think about it. The Orange Bowl doesn't look like the Orange Bowl very often, but it does tonight. The series history. Florida State against Miami, one of the great rivalries in football. The 51st meeting since the early 50s. Miami leads it by eight last year. FSU broke a six-game losing streak. They won it on a botched field goal try late in the game, 10-7. The last three meetings decided by 11 points. And how many heartbreaking field goals have we seen decide games in this series? Will we have another one tonight? Graham Gano to kick it off for the Seminoles of Florida State. Darnell Jenkins and Bruce Johnson are deep to receive for the Hurricanes. We're underway in Miami. Jenkins from the six. Great speed on these kickoff return and coverage units. They'll start from the 21-yard line. Kyle Wright comes out. The junior from Danville, California, completed 18 touchdown passes a year ago, was honorable mention in the ACC. On track to graduate in December, but would still have eligibility left and certainly thinking about coming back next year. And I think what we'll see with this Miami offense and Kyle Wright, three-step passes, short five-step drops, get rid of the ball quick, and moving the pocket, moving him around in different spots as well. Charlie Jones is the tailback. And right to throw on first down, and unloads on first down. And overthrown by several strides intended for Jenkins, who caught 25 balls a year ago. A little adrenaline on that throw there. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> the Miami offense, the Canes line has to do a better job this year. Last season, it tied for last in the ACC in sacks allowed, including nine against Florida State. And four new starters up there. Walshlager, the center, the only returning starter of that front five. Sam Shields, number 83, a very talented freshman, is in for the first time at wide receiver. Wright looks his way and throws, and Shields makes a diving catch up near the 31. They have to get to the 33 for a first down. FSU's defense lost nine key players from last year's team, but great talent remains, especially at linebacker, a unit that has exceptional speed. Buster Davis in the middle of an All-American candidate. When you talk about a team being able to reload like a Florida State or a Miami, 
That comes when you lose four guys in the first round of the NFL draft and still expect to have an outstanding defense like Florida State expects this year. The Leon Jackson and Greg Olson form a two tight end set. They come out in the eye. Jones off the left side. Needed to get to the 32 yard line. He'll be stopped shy of that by D.J. Norris, the junior left end, starting in place of the injured Alex Boston. We talked about how important the offensive line play. Which offensive line can control the line of scrimmage? This time, the defensive front seven of Florida State controlled the action up there. Virtually no gain on that second down and short play. And on the safe side, they're going to bring in the chains to take a look. It did look like he was short. Both these offensive lines playing a lot of new faces. Guys that have played as reserves but not necessarily starters. You've got to be able to run the football in order to take pressure off of your quarterback in a game like this. Fourth and a yard. There's Bobby Bowden, the winningest coach ever. 359 victories. Two national championships to show for his body of work. Now the punt team will come out. There's Larry Coker. Now in his sixth year, he's been under fire for one of the great records in college football. It's amazing what the standards are with both these programs. Brian Monroe, who will also see some action this year at wide receiver, comes on to punt. Chris Davis, who only returned eight a year ago, is back waiting at his own 31. Both these teams really good on special teams, but a poor kick here. Monroe shanks it, and it's out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Just a 23-yard kick. Yikes. There was some decent pressure by Florida State, but not enough to... Uh, Alter Monroe that much. You have to expect a senior punter to get off a better kick than this on the first punt of the game. Just shanked it right off the left foot. Boy, and then he tried to draw a foul, but uh, they weren't buying that one. Here's Drew Weatherford, Land Lakes, Florida, his home, and yes, a descendant of William Wallace, the Scottish legend <laughs> who was Braveheart. Booker. On the screen, got a block to the 40 and knocked out of bounds. First down. Nice block by Mario Henderson, his left tackle, and a game of 16. And a nice call by Jeff Bowden. Get Drew Weatherford into the game early with a nice little swing pass, an easy throw with a very versatile Lorenzo Booker. Not only a good runner, but an excellent receiver out of the backfield. That's an easy throw and catch for Drew Weatherford. Here's Henderson out leading the play. Nice first down play for the Knowles. Booker and Surratt are the running backs. Booker the deep man. He's already stated his goal this year. He wants to set a seminal rushing record. Weatherford. Short set and throws. Tipped into the air and incomplete. Good coverage by Randy Phillips. He was all over to Cody Bag. Florida State's offense, the Seminoles very thin up front. They need to improve on last year's rushing totals. They only averaged 94 yards a game. That won't get it done. Now that's the real area concern. It was a point of emphasis during the spring and the early part of summer camp. They have to run the football better in order to be effective offensively. Second down and 10, the Seminoles opening possession. They are already in Miami territory. And you can already see the maturation of Drew Weatherford. Second consecutive checkoff. They show blitz. They don't come. Weatherford tries to run and is stuffed. Romeo Davis and Kareem Brown on the tackle. Two all-star defenders. That Miami defense has always had big-time players. The safeties are at the head of the list this year. Both starters All-American candidates. Certainly All-American talent. Merriweather is the senior, the sophomore, the rising star is Kenny Phillips. Third down, a big down in this ball game last year. Third and one to six is a manageable down. Third and seven plus, very difficult against these two defenses. Three wide outs. Weatherford throws. 
Broken tackle, a chance to get inside the 30. The catch made by Chris Davis. Runs excellent routes, and you saw him get open over the middle that time, and it looks like they are just yeah. short of first down. A lot of times you say, well, why didn't the receiver go 11 yards if he needed 10 for the first down? But you also want a receiver to come back to the football. Pretty good protection. Watch Davis come back to his quarterback and shield the defender. You want the receiver to do that, but in doing so, he came up a little short of the first down. The bottom line being, if he doesn't come back, he can't make the catch. That's exactly right. Or it might be intercepted, even worse. First big decision of the ball game, fourth and inches. The difference between this fourth down decision and the one Larry Coker had, the ball is on the Miami 30-yard line. Quarterback keeper Weatherford. And there is a penalty marker down. Miami lined up offsides in the neutral zone on that short yardage play. Ron Cherry, our referee, and there's a great break for the Seminoles early. The neutral zone is the way, the length of the football, and you just can't get in there. Surratt and Booker continue as the running backs. Booker. Stop short of the 26-yard line. Booker was one of three backs last year that rotated with Greg Jones and Leon Washington, and really none of them, uh, as they tried to do it by committee, gave them a whole lot. And 94 yards a game, as we said, that won't do it. It's in the ACC. Yeah. That's unheard of for them. <laughs> and that's why Drew Weatherford struggled in the middle of the season as well, because once teams realized the running threat was non-existent, they could really play defense against the pass only. Made it tough on the freshman quarterback. Weatherford under pressure. Dumps it off to Surratt. The fullback lowers his shoulder and gets to the 20. <laughs> Romeo Davis, the middle linebacker, made the stop. Weatherford a season ago as a redshirt freshman threw for 3,200 yards. That was the third best all time for FSU, and it was the best in the nation for a freshman. He and Kyle Wright tied with those 18 touchdown passes for tops in the Atlantic Coast Conference, but the 18 interceptions, the part he really wants to work on this year. Third down and five. To the shotgun. Miami showing blitz, and they come with it. Weatherford gets rid of it and knocked down. Excellent defense by Randy Phillips, the corner. And you know he is looking forward to playing tonight. He was burned for the first touchdown pass in the Peach Bowl. He's had to wait all year for redemption. Randy Shannon, defensive coordinator, said he's held up very well in the summer in press coverage, man-to-man, -man, and twice they've gone after him tonight, and he defended both times. Fourth and five, Sismatio will come on for a field goal attempt, 37 yards. He was the young man who didn't get the chance to redeem himself either. In the Orange Bowl, missed two field goals and an extra point. Not this time. Drills it through from 37 yards, and FSU draws first blood in Miami. It's 3-0. ESPN's College Football is broadcast in high definition and presented by Pioneer Plasma. Welcome back to Miami, everyone. Florida State and the Hurricanes. The Seminoles on top by three midway through the first quarter. The team that has scored first has won 14 of the last 15. Last year, Florida State scored the first 10 points of the game, and little did they know that would be all the scoring they would have in the game, winning 10 to 7. Gano will kick off to Darnell Jenkins and Bruce Johnson. That's Jenkins, 5'10, 190 pound senior. 
Johnson, number 22. Jenkins cuts in front of Johnson into two. As the seam trips over the leg of a blocker. Hope you join us for the launch of Monday Night Football on ESPN. We'll have a special doubleheader for you. First at 7 Eastern, the Vikings take on the Redskins in D.C. And then at 10-15, it's the Chargers against the Raiders in Oakland. Johnson against Brunel. Tomlinson against Moss. Is it Monday yet? Monday Night Football on ESPN begins September 11th. Both games also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Second possession for the Hurricanes. This one from their 27 yard line. Jones. With a shake and bake on the outside showing you his speed. Out of bounds at the 42 yard line. Roger Williams shoved him out of, band, out of bounds but not before a really good game. Florida State and Miami. Look at all the guys that will play on the Redskins, San Diego, Minnesota, and Oakland on Monday night. Of course, you would expect so many guys. They are just littered across these rosters. Last year in this game, 17 guys who played in this game got drafted in the NFL. <laughs> Amazing. And probably all but one or two made the final roster. Nice swing pass. Bryant makes the tackle on Sam Shields. And there is one of the great players in the last 10 years, Edron James, who for so long was brilliant for the Indianapolis Colts. He was so good, he was involved in the deal in the trade for Marshall Paul, who might be the best player we've seen in the last 15 years. Taking his act out to the desert now. Arizona. Not too many people have succeeded out there. <laughs> well, they call it a desert, maybe. <laughs> That's right. His cousin Javaris is on this ball club. Here's the blitz, and they get him. Coming right up the middle. Buster Davis, the middle linebacker, the All-American candidate on the Buckus watch list, and he showed you his speed. Even at 246, he was flying. Well, he is the heart and soul. You see him time it up, number seven. He anticipated the snap count, and because he got that head start on the snap count, the back had no chance to block him in that pass protection. And that's on Kyle Wright, maybe, to change up that snap count a little bit. Don't let those linebackers anticipate the count and hit that blitz full speed. Did you see the tight end, Chris Zellner? He hesitated as he went through the line because the guy was already past him. It was, oh, well, I might as well keep going. Too late now. Guy is a big time linebacker. Flags are down to stop the play. Kyle Wright will lose five yards. They want a quicker passing game this year. That should help the offensive line as well. Yeah. Well, and the thing on a running play or a play action pass, and it's part Kyle Wright, it's part Charlie Jones there. If it's play action, there's a blitz coming, you've got to forget the fake. You gotta you gotta forget about the fake and make sure you block that linebacker. Mm -hmm. and, and the result now, third and very, very long because of that mistake. Third and twenty-seven. Four-man rush. With a swing to the outside to Olsen. That was just designed to pick up a few. Buster Davis was over there on the coverage. And Kyle Wright will live to throw another series. And again, you see the range of Buster Davis. He doesn't come out of the game on third down. He plays in the nickel and dime. Great range from sideline to sideline. He's not the biggest linebacker, not the fastest that they've had at Florida State. But Mickey Andrews says he may be the smartest linebacker they've ever had. He actually can play all three linebacker spots. Smart is good. And wrote a kick to Davis. Much better kick this time. Davis from the 33 to the 42. 38 yard kick. Good return. And he got a timeout here at the Orange Bowl. 3 0. Seminoles over the Canes. Welcome back to ESPN Primetime, our special Monday version. I love this stuff. You can probably see your house from here. We're going into 
Joe Campbell Stadium at Florida State University. That's in Tallahassee, the state capital of Florida. And now down across the Gulf as the crow flies to the University of Miami and their home, the Orange Bowl. 477 miles if you want to drive, seven hours and 45 minutes. You want to drive fast, seven and a half hours. <laughs> Anton Smith has checked in for the first time. And he'll get a carry. And Smith hit and tried to stay on his feet by Randy Phillips. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, guys, when you try to describe why this rivalry is so critical to both schools, it's easy to look at some of the reasons. 123 players rosters are from the state of Florida. 22 of the guys actually played high school football together. But it gets even deeper. Two sets of brothers are squaring off against each other tonight. Miami has Maraca Atkins at defensive end. He'll be going against his little brother, Dumaka Atkins, who's at center. Now their dad, Fred, is here with the grandmas on the Florida State side. All the sisters are on the Miami side, so it's a family affair that makes this rivalry just that much deeper. All right, thanks very much, Holly. Chris Davis makes the catch. There's the dad, Fred Glossy. Atkins, who was the was mayor of Sarasota. Mom, Sheila, can't take it. She just can't stand to watch your kids play against each other. Well, she doesn't have to worry about it right now because Dumak is on the sidelines. That's right. But eventually he will be in the game, spelling John Frady, and uh, hopes to have a little contact with his brother Baraka. Barack has been moved outside as a starting defensive end. Likes it a lot better out there than a tackle. Nice saving tackle there as Smith tries to go outside. Kenny Phillips came up, got him around the ankles. Tried to bounce that outside. Can't do it. Let's check in for a sports under 30 and 30 update. All right, guys, Dory Noga here. Tiger Woods needed three holes to erase a three-shot deficit to VJ Singh in the final round of the Deutsche Bank Championship. Tiger went on to win by two, his fifth straight tournament title. And Steeler quarterback Ben Roethlisberger released from a hospital today after Sunday's emergency appendectomy won't play Thursday against the Dolphins. Next Sports Center after the game, hit mobile ESPN for continuous alerts and updates, guys. Graham Cano is going to have to punt it away. It was really a big stop by the Miami defense, but it was more the result of Anton Smith making a decision to try to bounce that outside. Against a slow defense, Number it can 43. happen. It's a five-yard penalty. Now it's going to be a delay and push it back five yards. It looked like he had the first down. Yeah, it looked like he had it, and then he stepped out and tried to bounce it outside, and very difficult to do against the Miami defense. Normally, guys who are 5'9 and 188 love that outside run, that cut. Gano was a first-team high school All-American kicker. Fair catch made at the 18-yard line by Darnell Jenkins. No return after a punt of 36. 3-0, first quarter from the Orange Bowl. Presented by Dish Network. Get 100% all digital TV starting at only $19.99 a month. Better TV for all. And in part by Cargill. We collaborate, create, and succeed with our customers. Back to the Orange Bowl where Miami will start. Just outside its own 18-yard line, and it's been pretty much all defense so yeah. far, huh? Well, the first possession, they shot themselves in the foot by missing the third and one run. The second possession, they gave up the sack, and uh, hard to move the football when you don't operate that way. Jones with a chance to carry, dives forward for two yards, and that's it. And the middle linebacker again, that guy, Buster Davis, is right there. 
very, very active and very smart, as we mentioned. He plays all three linebacker spots. He studies the game. He plays with passion. He plays with great energy. And we've already seen tonight great anticipation. He is on the Butkus watch list as the best linebacker in the country this year. I would use the old lefty Grizzell saying if I won something to head Butkus on it, I'd screw it on the hood of my car and drive around town all day. <laughs> Complete pass for no gain as Chris Elner, the backup tight end, made the catch, and Roger Williams was right there with him. You can join us on ESPN2. You get the game telecast on the big screen, but you can take a look at all the other stuff we're showing you. Both coaches, you see both quarterbacks, one on the sideline, one playing. You get sky cam. You get all sorts of stuff. And you can pretend you're a director like our guy Scott Johnson. That's, that's right. right. Look at all those different camera shots. That's all part of ESPN full circle. And we've got a timeout called by the Canes with 3.57 to go. Well, there's Rich Olson next to Larry Coker. And obviously uh, not a smooth start for this Miami offense. Guy who spent 12 years in the NFL between stints as Miami's offensive coordinator. Kyle Wright says the addition of Rich Olson has changed the feeling on offense among those Hurricane players. I think the biggest thing is, is our offense has an at, you know kind of a different attitude. He came in the first day and, and established that, you know, not only our defense but no defense is going to push us around. You know, we're not going to take crap from anybody. And I think that is really, you know, kind of trickled down, you know, all the way down to the players. And it's, uh, I've I've been really impressed with how we've responded to, you know, to the new coaches. There was a big turnover in coaches, as you see, and a couple of the guys who were fired, including Art Kehoe, who was the offensive line coach, had been institutions here. I mean, they'd been here for 25 years. So it was a big shakeup of the staff, and it all followed on the heels of that 40 to 3 loss to LSU in the Peach Bowl. That stunned a lot of people. In fact, I think it stunned everybody. Mm -hmm. Another third and long for Miami. Incomplete intended for Greg Olson, his favorite target, who was number two in both catches and yards a year ago behind Sonoris Moss. But that pass a little high, and Olson looked like he was pretty well covered. Well, Florida State showed blitz, and then they dropped out and rushed three and dropped eight, and it kind of fooled up Kyle Wright that time. Nowhere to go. It ended up thrown into coverage. Davis drops back to take another punt for Monroe. Better punt. That's not bad at all. Flipped the field a little bit that with that kind of kick. Crushed it. Got the bounce. 68 yards. That'll make up for the shank. On Saturday night, it's another great rematch from last season. Jim Tressel leads the number one Buckeyes into Austin to tangle with the third-ranked Longhorns of Mac Brown. Last year's winner took the momentum all the way to the national title. See what happens this year. Two of college football's most storied programs meet on Saturday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. I think Ohio State has the edge offensively in that game right now. Texas the edge defensively and the home field. Jumaka Atkins is in at center. He'll have a chance, perhaps, to get out and block his older brother as the pass is completed to Warren. But Brandon really, Warren, the freshman tight end, may have been the best tight end in the country last year coming out of high school. Yeah, they're really high on him. They, they feel he's fast enough. He could have played wide receiver. 6'2", 230 pounds, can really run. They've got two freshman tight ends they're very, very high on. Warren, the faster of the two. Booker is the tailback in the eye. Oh, and neither team able to establish anything. This is getting swallowed up inside. Taraz McCray makes the tackle. There is Baraka, who is outside to keep him away from those 300-pound double teams. 
And there is his younger brother Dumaka who has come in to play center for John Frady. And I asked Dumaka, are you are you mad that, that Baraka moved outside to end? He said, no, they're a big stunt team, so he'll be coming in to me a few times. Boy, that'll be the subject of some Thanksgiving trash talking, won't it? <laughs> Over a couple slices of turkey and sweet potato. Weatherford gives off nothing doing. What a great fake by Booker. Now they blow the whistle, and it's no play. The penalty on the far side. This could be a break for Florida State because that play had no chance. Booker was looking at a team picture of the defense when he started to turn the corner. Well, you know, the thinking is for Jeff Bowden, fast defense, they love to pursue, go misdirection. And a lot of times that works, but it didn't fool the Miami defense, particularly John Beeson, number two. He stayed right at home and smelled that play out. Seminoles last year, uncharacteristically with the most penalties in the ACC. And the legend wondering what's going on with this offense on third and ten. Miami's all mixed up. They just ran a guy in onto the field late. LeVon Ponder, number 35, was running in late. They didn't have their call. They have to use a timeout. It's one of the things about this game is the fact that it's being played on the opening weekend of college football. So you have one team that's ranked 11th, one team that's ranked 12th, yeah. two teams that always have national championship aspirations, and one of them, you lose tonight, you're probably out of it. If you if you don't win the rest of the other 11 games, then you got a chance yeah. to get back in, but you're probably out of it. Well, the problem is, if you have teams that go undefeated, yes. But if you have teams in a normal year that lose one game, you only have one undefeated team, you lose this game and you get on a roll, you still have a chance to play for it. Miami last year lost this game 10 to 7 to open the season. Then they won eight in a row and they were ranked number three going right. late into the season into November. But they, you know, had an upset loss to Georgia Tech that kind of knocked over their apple cart. But I, I, I like the game being first for a couple reasons. Number one, in the offseason, your guys can focus. I mean, they, you don't have to motivate them at all to get in at 630 in the morning and work out and throw and lift because they know our first game is against our arch rival. And uh, I kind of like that. Plus, I think it's, uh, it's obviously good for us. To oh, still absolutely. The season, right? We're very grateful. First time since 85 that neither opened up in the AP top 10 preseason, but they're just outside of it. And we could see these two again in the ACC championship game. Weatherford, good protection. Tipped and intercepted. Now they're calling it off. Johnson tipped it. Yep. Merriweather appeared to pick it off. They're going to say it hit the ground. These two young corners for Miami have been all over the Florida State receivers tonight. This time it's Bruce Johnson gets his hand in there on the intended yep. receiver car. Good call. Yep, well, it was a good call. But good defense. And now Miami should have their best field position of the night because of that long punt by Monroe a few plays ago. Miami confused on special teams. Players hustling on and off the field. It's a flag down. Jenkins driven all the way back to the 34-yard line. Another flag is down, and so is Jenkins. 55-yard punt. One yard on the return. I'm just wondering if Miami had 12 guys on the field I think on that that's play. It. But then you're going to have a block in the back or something on the return as well. Again, you know, one of the new coaches is the special teams coach as well for Miami. Joe Panunzio is a former head coach at Murray State the last six years. He's the new special teams coach. That's him talking to Larry Coker right there. And I think they may have had 12 guys on the field. A late substitution again. And that would really hurt because they had him pinned back. They were going to get good field position. Absolutely. Officiating crew talking it over. There's a flag down immediately as the play started. And then another flag on the return. 
Yep, that's that's what, it what it's going to be. Illegal participation. Which means too many men on the field. And that's more severe than illegal substitution if a guy's trying to run off the field. They played the play with 12 guys. Could be very effective if you can get away with it. And that's a huge penalty. It is huge. 15 yards. Well, it was fourth and 10. They had a chance to flip the field and get great field position for an offense that's been struggling so far in the first quarter. And now they give the ball back to Florida State with the 15-yard penalty. Now explaining things to Bobby Bowden. He's going to like the result of that one. Oh, another break for the Florida State offense here, but again, neither offensive line, Florida State or Miami, has been able to do anything in terms of controlling the line of scrimmage, and that is one of the critical keys in this game. Florida State has a three-point lead, but that's more the result of field position than anything else at this point. Smith is in as the tailback behind Weatherford. Weatherford short set, throws downfield. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what a great play. Pierkowski was the intended receiver, but Kenny Phillips, who has been wow. on top of anything that's moved in the secondary, was right there. And this was all instinct because Kenny Phillips never even turned around and found the ball. He's looking at the receiver, and he just reached up and got his hand on the football. He didn't look at the quarterback's eyes. He looked at the receiver's eyes. And when he saw the, the receiver go for the ball, he went for the ball and made a great play. And perfect technique. He went straight up between his hands. That way he's sure he's going to get the ball. Guys in the secondary are really good. Guys up front aren't bad either as Anton Smith is thrilled. Well, think about it now. This defense last year finished fourth in the nation in scoring defense, fourth in total defense, first in pass defense. And the only really new guys are the two corners. Everything else is pretty much the same. Beeson and Phillips combined on that tackle. Well, Miami has not missed a beat. No. Weatherford facing a third and 11. Every series has gone to third down and long for both ball clubs, it seems. Low snap, but Weatherford controls, and now a whistle. <laughs> You know, I think it's, on the offense. Is that the Five third delay penalty. game? Yes. Down. We talked about the clock and, uh, you know, the change of possession, the clock moving fast. This is just a case on those delay of games of just not getting ready to play, getting the play from the sideline, getting out of the huddle, getting to the line of scrimmage and going. Coaches have to learn how to deal with the quicker rhythm yeah. because that play clock starts early. And if you can't get that play in there, you can't expect 18 and 19 year old kids to take up the slack. Coaches have to do that. Now it's third and 16. Three wide receivers. And this is where Drew Weatherford has to be smart with the football. We talked about managing the game, making a good decision. Last year he would have tried for sure to throw one in for a first down on this third and long. Let's see what he does with the football on this third and long. Four-man rush. He'll go deep down the sideline. Perfect coverage again. Carr was going deep, and Sharp was right in front of him. And then Sharp pulled up short, so the car had no chance to get deep. Glenn Sharp, one of the great stories on this Miami football team. He's had two medical redshirt years out with knee injuries. He was the guy that got called for the pass interference call in the Ohio State National Championship game. Most people believe it was not a pass interference call. He's had to wait a couple years to get back on the field and uh, excited to be there tonight. Well, in the same, most people said what pass interference? Right. right. Jenkins deep, high short punt this time. Jenkins racing up, makes the fair catch at the 48. Miami with excellent field position now after a 31-yard punt. 
Those new rules are designed to make the game go a little bit faster. They thought things were getting out of hand. When the ball is marked, ready to play, the official blows his whistle. It, the clock starts then and not when the ball is snapped. It starts on the kickoff when the ball is kicked rather than when the receiving team touches it. See, right now, the referee just started the clock when they mark the ball ready for play. And it's, it's made a difference in this first weekend of games. It's cut down about 12 to 14 plays a game of the two teams combined. And Miami had its offense out there quickly, so they might have at least a chance to get a snap before the quarter ended, but they couldn't get that play off. We've got a timeout on the field, end of the first quarter. It's a defensive battle, 3-0 Seminoles. Back to ESPN Full Circles College Football Primetime presented by Dish Network. This is Mike Patrick along with Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe from the Orange Bowl in Miami ready to start the second quarter where it's 3 nothing. Miami with its best field position. Jones the tailback 13 yards rushing tonight. Get a short gain on this pass play to leg it. He's felt it. Now what Kyle Wright has to process on that throw, the, the good quick three-step drop, but they are closing on it fast. So sometime here in the near future, you might want to go hitch and go. If they're going to close that fast on the little three-step hitch route, you have to be prepared to pump fake and fake that throw and try to go by him. Bobby Bowden has always said, speed is the most important thing in college football, and you can see it on both of these teams. They've got some blazers. Jones, blocker in front, dives to the 42, needed to reach the 41 for a first down. Charlie Jones, when Tyrone Moss got hurt in the Virginia Tech game last year, he said he was kind of shocked to go in the game. And he wasn't expecting to play very much, right. ended up running for 95 yards in that big win up in Blacksburg. People would think maybe he's not the flashiest back, but he's tough, he's quick, he can take the ball to the distance. They've worked hard to get him more involved in the passing game this year with Rich Olsen's offense. And he said about this night, every guy dreams of being a man in a game like this. Right? Short set throws for a first down. Good toss to Jenkins. And it's a first down Miami. Holly's on the sideline. And she has a very special gift. Well, my former Miami running back, Edron James, is here. He was honored for a donation he made to the school. But more importantly, he's here watching his cousin, Javaris James, at running back. He was around you a lot of the time growing up as you played. What do you hope he learned from you that will help him this year? Well, you know, all the things that I had to learn, I had he already know, you know, so he should go out there and play way beyond his years. And I, I expect him to be a better player than I was. And hopefully it carries over to the NFL because he's going to be good, no doubt. Back with more in a moment after the play. Thanks, Holly. Right straight back to throw. Blitz coming. They try to pick it up and right. Throws to the sideline. Caught at the 10 by Jenkins. That was a great adjustment by Jenkins. It was not intentionally underthrown. It was underthrown because of the pressure on Kyle Wright, but Darnell Jenkins was able to find the ball and adjust to it in midair. Boy, Wright knew he was going to get yep. it too, didn't he? He got rid of it under pressure, and because he got hit by Buster Davis, he didn't get everything he wanted onto that ball. But Darnell Jenkins looked back, found the ball, saw it was short, and made the adjustment 20. on the sideline. 27-yard gain. Jenkins has had an outstanding offseason. Worked really hard on his craft. Miami driving. They may take a look at this play a second time. It's under review. I think the question is going to be, did he have a foot on the sideline or a hip on the sideline as he came down? I think his knee was down yep. in the field of play before he fell out of bounds. That was I a great adjustment. You. Right knee on the ground, foot still in play. That'll stay as ruled on the field of completion, I believe. And he drugged that left foot just for good measure. You don't have to do that in college football, but the next level he will. You have to have indisputable visual evidence to overturn it. 
the call on the field was a catch. Yeah. So you have to show indisputable evidence that it was not a catch. Now we got caught against USC and Arkansas one that we were convinced yeah. went one way and it went the other. But we'll go out on a limb again. Yeah. That's a catch. The good news for Miami right now with Jenkins emerging a little bit in this game. That's one of the big questions for Miami. Who will emerge as a playmaker on the outside as the wide receiver? This is a school that has had a great tradition of wide receiver, talented wide receiver, dating back to Michael Irvin. Oh, yeah. But uh, you know, Ryan Moore, who was expected to be a big-time receiver here, has underachieved a little bit and is currently suspended indefinitely from the program. So it's up to guys like Darnell Jenkins and Lance Leggett, a couple of upperclassmen, to bring along some of the younger guys like Sam Shields, the true freshman out of Sarasota who has had an outstanding training camp. Moore was going to miss the first two games for violating team roles. Then he's been suspended indefinitely for an alleged traffic altercation on campus. After review, replay confirms the call on the field is as called. So it is a first down. And a wonderful effort of Jenkins finding the ball and then also knowing where the sideline was. That, that was a terrific catch. J.R. Bryant was the defender. Two tight ends. Different formation set this series for Miami's offense has loosened up this Florida State defense. More spread formations. Kyle right to the shotgun. Sell out blitz, and they got him at the 25. Holy cow, they got there in a heartbeat. Well, there's a flag down, but Kyle Wright, we talked about managing the game and making good decisions. Sometimes the defense wins. Florida State's defense won on this play. You must throw it away. That's a break for Miami because it's a dead ball penalty, and it's a break. Less yardage in the sack. But that's a play where Kyle Wright has to throw the ball away. Yeah. You've got to learn to throw that ball away. Don't put your team in a bad situation. Throw it away. That's 15 yards on that loss. You can't, yeah. you can't have that. Yeah. As it turns out, they only lose five. So. Still first down, but now from the 15-yard line. They cannot get a first down. It's first and goal. And that is vintage Mickey Andrews. You yes, get in the red is. zone on him and make a couple plays. He is coming after you, baby. And I wouldn't be surprised if he comes after Kyle Wright again on this play because right now Miami's in field goal range, if nothing else. The longtime defensive coordinator and associate head coach. Jones about Buster Davis? drilled in the backfield and Davis living up to his credentials. He just unloaded. Miami tried to go on a quick count and overload the left side of the Florida State formation. And watch Buster Davis read it and come right now. Wow. Such quick recognition and he knew and look at the angle. Proper pursuit angle. Now they threw a flag. Watch his helmet come off. Now, they, they threw a flag. I think they're going to pick it up yeah. because they finally realized he didn't take it off. It came off. Uh, it popped off by contact. But boy, is he good. He is good. Oh, personal foul on Florida State. Oh, a spear at the end of the play. Take a look at for sure. Yeah, take a look at Paul Griffin, number 54, junior college transfer. At the end of the play, he's coming right on top of the ball carrier, head first. And it wasn't for the helmet, it was for the spear, and that's a good call against Florida State. Good call and a stupid play. Miami with fresh life now inside the 10. It's still first down. Driven out of bounds is Charlie Jones as he tried to turn the corner. One thing Rich Olsen's doing in this drive, he's really mixing up his formations and his personnel groups, and that comes a lot from his NFL background. Two tight ends or three wide receivers, that time a couple tight ends trying to outflank the Florida State defense. That time they were able to get Buster Davis blocked and get to the edge. Anthony Hulis, number 46, the strong safety, credited with the tackle as he drove Jones out of bounds. Over this great defensive unit for Florida State. Not much room to go, especially when you try to get outside. They're just too fast. Slow getting out of the huddle for Miami. The play clock down to six seconds right now. 
Jones. Breaks a tackle, dives, touchdown! Charlie Jones, who had five touchdowns last year, gets his first this year. If at first you don't succeed. Right. And it wasn't flashy, but it was effective. He broke one tackle and dove to the end zone. That was one of their heavy formations. They had three tight ends on that side of the formation that just tried to pound it. He still had to break a tackle to get there. With the point after, it's 7-3. The Canes with their first touchdown of the young season, and they have the lead. Is this thing? Uh, I don't know. Now come on, get to the good stuff. Oh, stop, stop. There it is. Oh, that's it. Wait, wait, here it comes, here it comes. Nice. Look at that. I could watch that all day. One more time? Sure. comes at you fast. Invest wisely. Invest with Nationwide. Investments, retirement, insurance. Nationwide is on your side. You can take your clothes. Put them in the sun. You're going down the road. Baby, and you can't come back. Someday, baby. Technology has an all-in-one notebook bundle to help you go wireless wherever your work life takes you. Now, the HP Pavilion Notebook Bundle with Intel Centrino Mobile Technology comes with an HP printer, wireless mouse, and an extra battery for only $699.99 after mail-in and instant savings. Pick up yours today. It is absolutely possible to find a woman <laughs> who is a sports fan on eHarmony. I'm in my Browns and he's in his Steelers, two biggest rivals in the NFL. Well, as far as, as, far as I'm as concerned. Far as concerned. <laughs> my dad said, you're going to marry a Steelers fan? Oh, she was starting up big time when the Browns looked like they had some life. Looked like they were going to really give them a run for their money. And... Or at least score a point or yeah. something. It's fun to have a little banter back and forth. Find everything you're looking for on eHarmony.com. Log on today. Jones with that touchdown run has given Miami a 7-3 lead over Florida State. We're early in the second quarter. 51-yard drive kept alive by an untimely penalty against Florida State. Brian Monroe, who will handle the kickoff duties this year. Joslyn Shaw and Michael Ray Garvin, a track star and All-American are deep. Garvin, two yards deep, he'll bring it out. Doesn't get to the 15. He was drilled by Richard Gordon, one of the backup tight ends. Let's go back to the Miami touchdown. Take a look at a couple things. First tight end, Greg Zellner, number 88, is going to come down to get a nice seal block on Lawrence Timmons. That's going to enable Charlie Jones to get to the outside. And then Roger Williams, the free safety, number eight, is unblocked but can't make the tackle on Charlie Jones. A good block, a missed tackle, and Miami has the lead. Weatherford leads out his offense. Got Lorenzo Booker behind it. Booker, a little hesitation. 
and he is drilled by John Beeson number two. We talked about Buster Davis. Well, John Beeson, Randy Shannon told us yesterday, defensive coordinator, this guy plays and practices with a chip on his shoulder. I mean, he plays angry. He practices angry. He competes like John Vilma, former Miami uh, linebacker. He's a little undersized. Maybe he's been told he can't do something for a lot in his life. But, uh, boy, he gets after it on the practice field and the game field. He's part of a unit that is held the Seminoles to one yard on seven rushes. Weatherford unloads on the short pass to his backup tight end Pierkowski. And there's a flag down at the end of the play. Now consider this, Mike. Last year when these two teams played, Miami's defense held Florida State to nine first downs and 170 yards of offense only and lost 10-7. to seven. This is going to be on Shannon Boatman, the starting right tackle. See if we can tell what he did. Right there, oh, right yeah. at the end of the play. Now we've seen two personal fouls on Florida State and both of them by junior college transfers who yeah. this is their first foray into the Miami Florida State game and a little extra exuberance is costing their football team. Well you might be able to get away with that in Juco ball but you're not supposed to get it away get away with it on this level. They one of the points of emphasis the last couple of years is not being able to pick guys off a pile like that. Now it's third and 15. Weatherford in the shotgun inside his own five. Again, Rutherford needs to be very smart with the football right here. Don't feed the frenzy. Going to play it safe. Draw play to Lorenzo Booker. He has absolutely no place to go. Swarmed over by the orange-shirted Hurricanes. And you go back to, it seems like a long time ago, but the 60-some-yard punt by Brian Monroe that finally flipped field position for Miami right. in a defensive struggle. Field position is huge. Miami now has the edge in the field position game. You are absolutely right. And two penalties have been a huge part of this game so far. Graham Gano. Jenkins waits in Seminole territory. Miami looks like they're coming after this kick, too. Ten guys on the line. Nice kick. Jenkins, the 44, ran into his own man and fell on it at midfield. Spencer Adkins dropped back to block and nearly caused a disaster. It's a loss of six. Join us for the launch of Monday Night Football on ESPN. It's a special doubleheader. First at 7 Eastern, the Vikings take on the Redskins. And then at 10-15, the Chargers against the Raiders in Oakland. It's Johnson against Brunel. Tomlinson against Moss. Is it Monday night yet? Monday Night Football on ESPN begins one week from tonight. Both games available in high definition on ESPN HD. Of course, those are special times for the opening weekend. One thing you might see this series is Miami and Kyle Wright trying to get Greg Olson back involved in the game. The tight end in the middle of the field. Jones, same play that he scored on. Nothing doing this time. He'll lose a couple. You see the speed of Geno Hayes, the new starting outside linebacker, young sophomore out of Greenville, Florida. He better be fast. He's 2'11". Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Better be able to fly. But they've always gotten it done with speed. I mean, often Florida State and Miami have a bunch of guys that other programs would consider undersized. But you can't block him because you can't get yeah. to him. Can't block what you can't see. So they can't catch. Either one. Second and 14. It's been a game dominated by defense. Four man rush. Wright still looks underneath to Jones. Good decision. Nothing open down the field. Manage the game. Don't take a sack. Don't take a loss. Don't force a throw. The last time Miami had the football, they finally got something going. It started with good field position. Kyle Wright with a couple big passes. Jenkins, beautiful work on the sideline. Some good running by Charlie Jones. 
and they got into the end zone to take the lead. But field position started it, and then they executed. And as you mentioned, the, the personal foul penalty on Paul Griffin really helped their cause down by the goal line. I'll take Buster Davis right now. You can have the next choice. <laughs> they can play, boy. Three-man rush this time. Nice right ball. throws to the sideline, has the first down, throw a bullet to Leggett. And that's poised by your quarterback. He moves out of the pocket, but he doesn't just take off and run. Now, last year as a sophomore and a first-year starter, he might have been inclined to just tuck this and take off and run. But he scrambles, but he keeps his eyes downfield, and he finds Jenkins again, or Leggett, on the sideline. Leggett does a nice job coming back to the football. This kid was really beaten up a year ago. 33 sacks this club gave up behind a substandard offensive line. And how often have you said that about Miami? A substandard offensive line? A school that has produced so many All-Americans up front. But he's taking advantage of better protection right yep, now. Sure is. And, and, and it's, they're running the ball with enough effectiveness to keep the Florida State defense a little bit back on their heels. You have to run it with some effectiveness. Then you can play action pass. And you can also throw your quick game. They've there you see in those three losses, he was just buried. Yeah. Tonight off to an excellent start. 10 out of 12 for 72 yards. He's connected on the last six. Blitz coming. Little toss to the tight end. Nice catch by Greg Olson. Yeah. Against FSU last year, he had the game of his life. Eight catches for 137 yards. He's been very active in this first half as well, but not very deep. Well, it's a little bootleg, and Kyle Wright had to get rid of it quick, and a beautiful one-handed catch by Olsen. And again, you see the speed of Geno Hayes right there to wrap him up before a very after a very short game. But finally, a manageable third down, third and two. Zellner is in there with Olsen, two tight ends. Jenkins, nice catch, nice move to get the first down. That's just awareness of where you are and what you need yep. to get. And great use of your hands, catching the ball with your hands. Because that wasn't a great throw. That was a little bit of a tough throw by Kyle Wright. Jenkins had to reach out and catch it. But you mentioned it, a manageable third down. Miami missed their first three third down opportunities. They converted their last three. And a lot of it has to do with yardage needed for that conversion. One to six. Much more manageable than seven plus. Right, another short set. This one's tipped and falls incomplete. One of the things they wanted to do uh, was use those shorter drops yeah. with better blocking so that Wright doesn't get beaten around all the time. Well, it's three steps and get the ball out of your hands, you know, and, and so for linemen, it's easier to pass protect on a three-step drop because you know you don't have to hold your guy out for four seconds, and it gets out of the quarterback's hand. I still think Florida State is squeezing too hard on those three-step drops right now, and they're going to they're gonna try to run by him here very soon. But the three-step drop helps your pass protection, and play-action passing helps your pass protection as well. Second and ten. Pressure coming. Screen. Jones slips a tackle. Can't slip the second one. Saving stop by Jamie Robinson, the redshirt freshman. Otherwise, that's a big game. He's difficult third down situation to manage again third and one to six the reason that's more manageable is because you still have the threat of a run or a pass in third to one to six. Third and seven plus you're pretty much locked into having to throw the ball if you want to try to convert legged hill and shield during his wide receivers from Florida State is going to use the timeout on defense with six minutes and 12 seconds to go in the half. Both teams will have a chance to go to the sideline and talk it over back after this. ESPN's Full Circle, brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. And Olivia, 
redefining high depth. Back in Miami at the Orange Bowl. And some of the big stars are out tonight to see Miami leading Florida State 7 3. Dwayne Wade, the MVP of the NBA Finals this past season. Everybody wants the tickets to this one. Right sits in the pocket and delivers. Down to the seven, eight yard line goes Lance Leggett. Dwayne Wade likes it. We can just see the comfort level of Kyle Wright growing and growing with each play. No panic in the pocket against the Florida State rush. Good protection and a beautiful throw across the middle. And Lance Leggett, Rich Olson said the biggest improvement he made this summer was catching the ball with his hands. He said he was lacked confidence, so he always wanted to jump and try to catch it in his body. And this summer, he really started working on catching the ball with his hands. And he did at that time for a big conversion. That looked like Marcus Ball may have tipped at his Reggie's younger brother. Here comes Jones again to the five. But it had enough on it, so it still got there. Gino Hayes in on the tackle again. Leggett's had a big first half, along with Jenkins. Olsen has been more of a, uh, a third, you know, receiver in small packages and not getting much downfield. We well, got to believe Florida State is keyed in on him. He had nine catches in this game last year. I mean, he was the biggest weapon for Kyle Wright. More attention paid inside, more openings outside. Second and goal. Right for the end zone, incomplete. That ball could have been intercepted. Zellner went inside, and J.R. Bryant was back there and had it go past him. Take a look at last year, the wide receivers, not a whole lot. Not, not what they're accustomed to at the University of Miami. And so for Lance Leggett and Darnell Jenkins to be stepping up tonight, a very, very good sign for the Miami offense and for Rich Olsen, the new coordinator. And Moore, as we told you earlier, has been suspended indefinitely, but he was an underachiever, Todd. Yeah. A great freshman year, and it really fell off the last couple of years. Right, three-man rush and pressure. Wright's going to take off and has ripped as he got to the three. Well, we be careful. If you, if you really need an indicator of how hard the hitting is in this game, that's the third time a helmet has popped off on a collision. Quarterbacks are supposed to be smart. Get down. I think he was thinking maybe I could dive over for oh. one of those Sports Center uh, touchdown highlights. He better grow wings. John Petty for the field goal. I think they're asking Kyle right where he is, and his answer right now is Thursday. Yeah, they're checking on Kyle Wright as he got drilled out of bounds, but helped set up the field goal. So Miami is now up 10 to 3. And it was a 48 yard drive in five minutes and 21 seconds. Leggett with three catches on that drive. And Kyle Wright looks like he has really found his rhythm. Yeah, you can just tell when a quarterback's comfortable, their vision improves. They don't panic in the pocket. They scramble with their eyes downfield, and we're seeing all of that in Kyle Wright here, particularly in the second quarter. And we have not seen it from Drew Rutherford so far in the first half. Garvin and Shaw are deep from Monroe's kick. And Garvin will let this one go out of the end zone. Let's check in for a Sports Center 30 to 30 update. Dorian Oka here. Tiger Woods needed three holes to erase a three-shot deficit to VJ Singh in the final round of the Deutsche Bank Championship. Tiger went on to win his fifth consecutive tournament title. And Steeler quarterback Ben Roethlisberger was released from a hospital today after Sunday's emergency appendectomy. Will not play Thursday against the Dolphins. Next Sports Center on after the game. Use your mobile ESPN for continuous alerts and updates. Dari, thanks very much. 4:36 to go in the half. 
Let's see if FSU can get something going on offense. Weatherford wants the screen. Beautifully diagnosed by Miami. Absolutely nothing there. And they have had almost no success with anything they've tried. Nothing. I mean, they've run. That's the 21st offensive play that Florida State has run. And they've averaged well under three yards a play. And again, the speed and the pursuit, just nothing there for Booker. Not able to turn the corner. They've got to find a way to get Greg Davis down in the seam, down the field. Throwing sideline to sideline is pretty tough against this Miami defense. Florida State only three first downs. Weatherford, pretty good protection. That time it's picked off. Intercepted by Merriweather. The All-American candidate back inside the 15-yard line. There is a flag down. Weatherford had three interceptions a year ago and led this team in tackles. Drew Weatherford said he went back this winter and in the spring and looked at every one of his 18 interceptions and he realized that a lot of them that's on the return after the interception. A lot of his interceptions were the result of a bad decision throwing into coverage. This wasn't double coverage. It was just excellent coverage by Brandon Merriweather. He was right on the inside of the receiver, Davis. He knew that that was where Weatherford wanted to go with the football, and he slipped inside and made the interception. An All-American play by an outstanding free safety. He is a first-team preseason everything. We've seen a couple of guys who are money in the bank tonight, haven't we? So Miami forces the break. And the clock running as we approach the four-minute mark at the Orange Bowl. The Canes with a chance to build on their lead. And with the lack of success Florida State's offense has had, they really need to lean on their defense here in this possession. They need to stop big time. Right. Well, there was a hold yeah, on that right. play. I don't know if they saw it or they not. They sure did. Here comes the flag. Olsen just grabbed Lawrence Timmons. And I mean, barely kept him out anyway. I know. Lawrence Timmons, Mickey Andrews says, has the potential to be as good a linebacker as they've had at Florida State. And Lawrence Timmons is just going to rush. That's, that's too much for a tight end to block Lawrence Timmons. A tackle might have a better chance. A tight end, that's tough. Watch Timmons, 83, in a stand-up stance. Watch him come off the edge here and just get right by Greg Olson before he even gets in his stance. And Olson has no choice or alternative other than to grab it. Oh, you're right. That's, an, that, that's a mismatch. Yep. It drives them back to the 41-yard line out of field goal range. Now, if you're a quarterback, are you thinking about getting this back in chunks? You have to. Yeah, I mean, you've got the game going in your favor right now. The momentum is on your side. The field position is on your side. Get it back in chunks. It's first down. Don't do something to take yourself out of the game right here at the end of the first half. Right with time. Throws underneath. There's the first chunk. Completes it to Ryan Hill, the freshman. A late convert or convert from cornerback. Let's go to Holly. Well, we're still with Edrin James. Edrin, all this offseason, people are saying Miami has lost its swagger. What do you think? Well, I think um, when you when you lose guys to the NFL, you're gonna it's going to be a drop-off because you lose a lot of guys that come here, and we come here with a mindset of three years and out, and that's everybody's mindset. And the coaches, they gotta, they're got to they going to have to bring in somebody else. So that's, that's the only time you see a drop-off. But I'm glad they're saying it because it's giving me a lot of bets right now, and <laughs> I'm making a lot of money tonight. All right, well, thanks very much. Edron James, guys, here to watch his uh, cousin, Javaris. Right under pressure, steps up, can't do anything with it, take it out at the 33. You know, Holly was talking about swagger, and I thought one of the most interesting things I heard this whole week, we asked Randy Shannon, who's been around this program. He played on the 87 championship team as a linebacker, six years defensive coordinator. We asked him about swagger. You look at what's happened the last few years he said you know what swagger is swagger is when you don't lose to people you're not supposed to lose to yeah. and, and that's been the biggest difference with Miami I mean they've lost a couple games to Georgia Tech last year to North Carolina and Clemson the year before games that they were not supposed to lose 
It's, it's one thing to lose to Florida State or an yes. LSU in a bowl game. It's a different thing to lose to an unranked opponent, particularly at home, like Georgia Tech last year. Third and long, here comes the blitz. What a stop by Florida State. They that had to sure was. You're right. That was an absolute must, the way their offense has been going. They can't expect too many opportunities to score and can hardly allow Miami to get up by more than yep. seven points. And one mention, thanks to Edron Jade for being so patient with us. It's a guy I've always liked. He had a chance to make so much money with endorsements when he went to the NFL. But some people asked him to, to change the way his hairstyle looked, to change the way his gold cap teeth looked. And he said, look, I know there's a lot of money involved in this, but I'm not going to change anything. I am what I am, and we'll just let it play out as, it, as it's going to. I, I thought that was great character on his part. Nice catch by Petty, or kick by Petty. Edgerin stood by what he believed in and passed up the money, and I always admired him for that. Coming up at the half, we'll check in with Chris Lee and Kirk for the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Tiger, that's amazing, went for five today. Wild card baseball, and we'll take a look ahead at next Saturday night, Ohio State and Texas. See Lee down there. I just saw him in that booth next to us a few minutes ago. He's in there talking to Dave Hart. The He's everywhere. At Florida State. Yeah. The scooter. Did you see who he picked? I missed it. Yeah, he had the uh, Ibis head on him. Sebastian head. Good call so far. Florida State will start from inside the five. Delay to the fullback. Miami only has one timeout remaining, so they're not going to yeah. be able to stop the clock, even with this great field position. And all Florida State, I mean, they've got to just get out of this half and get to the locker room down seven. They'll get the ball to start the second half, but they've got to find some answers of how to move the football against this very stout Miami defense. They got the early field goal. That's been it. Weatherford taking no chances. Takes it on the keeper. Larry Coker debuting that new coaching staff, a new offensive system, and an old defense that will still hit you right in the chops. And they have a 10-3 lead over FSU. At the half, that was pretty impressive. Very impressive. Particularly defense the whole half, and offensively, they started to get a few things going there in the second quarter. Check in with Holly. Coach, what can your offense improve on in this next half? Blocking. Blocking. We, we, we hadn't been able to block them. You wanted to see your running game improve so far. Where else besides the blocking can you improve that running game? <laughs> blocking. <laughs> we can't knock them. We're not, they, they make tackles. You know, we got to knock them off the ball. We're not doing it. All right. They're thanks, tough. Coach. They're tougher than we are right now up front. Pretty good assessment. Open and honest. It's blocking. Our halftime score, Miami 10-3 over Florida State. Let's join Chris, Lee, and Kirk for the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Any person that follows football knows about the FSU Miami rivalry. That's that ball is kick. It's just you, your opponent, and whoever's heart is going to be the biggest. It's an in-state rivalry. What else do you want on a Monday night? Think about it. And a great first half it was. 10-3 Miami, Florida State has been held to one yard rushing, 43 yards total, and it has been a game of field position. A punt was one of the big plays of the first half yep. because, as Todd said, it changed the total field position. Miami was in control after that. Yeah, they really were. They took advantage of the field position, and I think right now, 
the challenge for Florida State who will get the ball to start the second half it's a manhood thing it really yeah. is I mean Bobby Bowden mentioned it to Holly on the way off and I'm sure they challenged him on the inside of the locker room offensive line you're getting your head handed to you you've got to take control of the line of scrimmage we can't have one yard rushing and hope to win this game against Miami for sure and I'll bet they didn't say you're having your head handed to you <laughs> it was another part of their anatomy that they were having handed to them Florida State will get the ball first. And we'll see if they were able to make any adjustments. Running the football is an attitude. It's a mentality. When Florida State played Penn State in the Orange Bowl, 25 yards rushing. Tonight, one. Five yards deep. They'll start from the 20-yard line. Michael Ray Garvin thinks better of it. This Miami defense tonight has been, in a word, suffocating. They have stopped everything down the field throwing. Pass coverage has been outstanding. No running room. One yard rushing for Florida State. And Drew Weatherford, I mean, they just have had nothing. Miami has had everything covered tonight that Florida State has tried. Run and pass. Florida State, for a long time, was just about as good. A couple of big penalties really hurt them. They did not get outside of their own 20 in the second quarter. Pick up a couple on this hard run by Anton Smith. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Holly. Guys, Coach Bowden told us at halftime that he was frustrated with the running game and the blocking in particular. Well, Lorenzo Booker, their running back, is frustrated as well. Just before the half, he was gathered in amongst the offensive linemen, and he was pleading with them, imploring them, but in a very positive way, saying, guys, I just need one more split second. If you can just hold your block. Holly, that was their longest run so far tonight. They've given three yards for Smith on a first down carry. Smith again. And it's obvious they want to come out and try to establish something, Todd. But Miami's not letting them. Well, they have to. I mean, because that obviously had to be the, the conversation in the locker room. We can't get pushed around the second half. We've got to take a little charge on the line of scrimmage. Because if they just go to a full all you know, sell out and throw the football, Drew Weatherford will get pummeled. And they've got to have some semblance of a running game to make the Miami defense play them honest. Can they convert a third down? They haven't tonight. This is third and seven. Miami rushes four, drops seven. Rutherford, a little jump pass, and Fag makes the catch up at the 35-yard line. Excellent patience, yep. and a nice throw. And they got protection. Miami showed blitz early in the play, and then only rushed four. And the five up front did a good job. Good pocket for Weatherford. He stepped up nicely and found Fag coming across the middle. Zone defense by Miami, and Weatherford connects for the first down. And even that was covered well. Yeah. I mean, they haven't gotten anybody running free anywhere tonight. Out of the shotgun this time. Weatherford bobbles the ball, forced to take off. And he was drilled by Beeson, number two, who came up quickly from that outside linebacker spot. You know, what? you know what I think happened here? Drew Weatherford knew he had a shot down the field. Miami was showing zero coverage, no free safety, and I think he just took his eyes off that ball because they were all lit up thinking he might have a big throw down the field. But it's first things first. You got to catch that shotgun snap first. It's second down at 12. Loss of two. It'll be second and 12. Crowd really into it. They have been the whole night. Weatherford underneath. Nice catch by Smith. And he drives forward to the 42-yard line. Of course, we're glad you've joined us on ESPN tonight. You can also join us on the entire family of networks. How about on ESPN2? You get close-up shots of the coaches, the quarterbacks, Skycam, and a lot of other isolations. Plus, you get to see the game itself. That's on ESPN, too, and now there's a flag down. 
on third and five. I think a substitution, offense, broke the huddle with the man. That's a five-yard penalty. On ESPN2, you can see the game like you've never seen it before. That multi-screen presentation gives you the primary game telecast. And in addition, you also get ESPNU televising the game on Skycam and the commentary of ESPN Radio's Colin Cowherd, ESPN 360, ESPN Radio, ESPN Deportes, ESPN.com, Mobile ESPN. Lorenzo Booker goes out in the flat, and Weatherford spins out of a tackle and dives forward to the 41-yard line. That's a tremendous effort by Weatherford. But you know what? You wonder about penalties. Sometimes that penalty goes by the board. 12 guys on the field to break the huddle. So it goes from third and five to third and ten. Much different scenario for Drew Weatherford. Miami pins their ears back and come after the quarterback. Baraka Atkins is in there first. And Florida State has to punt again. That, that little five-yard penalty for a mental mistake yep. really cost him right there. Atkins the missed game. him the first time thanks to a tremendous effort by Weatherford and then got him as he hustled downfield. Gano will punt to Jenkins, who waits back at his 20. Short. He'll have to stay away from it, and it takes a Miami bounce. Doesn't go far to start with, and they downed it just inside the 30. In a game where field position yep. is almost everything, the putter becomes either a huge liability or a tremendous weapon. Miami with the lead. They'll have the ball when we come back. So I get football 24-7. ESPN's College Football Primetime is broadcast in high definition and presented by Pioneer Plasma. Bernie Kosar, one of the great quarterbacks in a long line at quarterback U. Mm -hmm. Those guys are around here. You know, for Kyle Wright, a yes. lot of them are around practice and weight room. Charlie Jones. Mm -hmm. Before the game, Bernie came out while it was pouring to give uh, Kyle Wright a little encouragement. He's a good guy, too. Yeah, he really is. And, and it's a fraternity. I mean, you know, they're very proud of their quarterback lineage and heritage here at the University of Miami. And a lot of them believe that Kyle Wright, at least potential-wise, physical skills-wise, has a chance to be as good, if not better, than all of them that have played here. Jim Kelly may not agree with that. He thinks, you know, he probably thinks he was the best the ever to play. play. <laughs> It's being reviewed. Well, Jim did have a pretty good career. He sure did. He sure did. I can remember Jim's first start. He's an East Brady, Pennsylvania guy, and uh, he started, Howard Schnellerberger started him at Penn State. It was, it was kind of a surprise starting assignment, his first start, and he beat Penn State up in State College. A great career here at Miami. Well, Western Pennsylvania certainly produced far more than its share of great quarterbacks. And this is being reviewed. Well, here's my only problem. I, I thought, as we take a look at the replay, was he down? It doesn't look like Ooh. he was down before the ball came out. But if he was ruled down, well, then they wouldn't be reviewing. Is that reviewable? Uh, I don't think he was. They have been taught, just like NFL officials now. Try not to blow the whistle. If there's any question, let it go so it can be reviewed. Right. Now, we didn't hear a whistle, but that doesn't mean it didn't blow. Let's take a listen. After review, the play standard was called on the field. The player was ruled down. We have Miami ball. Well, then what's the purpose of the review if he's ruled down? There's, well, it's non-reviewable. Well, I didn't hear a whistle, but I saw a guy running in and marking and saying, pointing like he was down. 
End around. Jenkins gets away, but not from the second tackler. And that's the speed of Geno Hayes, who is right there. Well, you mentioned. I mean, there's no point in reviewing an unreviewable yeah. play. Yeah, I and I think that's what happened. I think they, they reviewed an unreviewable play and realized it was not reviewable and stayed with their original call. Hayes out of Greenville, Florida. His biggest asset is just blinding speed at 211. You You've got to be very strong to play linebacker at 211, too. And you mentioned it. I mean, Florida State, outside of uh, one drive and a couple bad penalties, has really played defensively just about as well as this Miami bunch. Third and 10 now for Kyle Wright and his offense. Pressure coming. Wright leans into one incomplete. Good coverage downfield by the Seminoles. Well, I thought Roger Williams was going to intercept that I all did the way. Too. I mean, he was staring right at it and made a move to come in front of the pass, and I don't know if he slipped or what happened to him, but uh, I thought that was going to be picked off for sure. I think he ended up looking at the receiver rather than the ball because the ball was right there for him. You're right about that. Monroe, who was averaged 43-7, will kick to Davis. Low line drive kick, returnable. Very returnable. Yep. You make that first guy miss, you got a chance. 18 yard return after a kick of 48. That gives the Seminoles a decent place to start at their own 46, but they need some offense. ESPN's Full Circle, brought to you by The Protector, starring Tony John in theaters everywhere, Friday, September 8th, and Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Well, we had a nasty forecast in Miami, but the weather has cleared up. You can actually see the moon, and it's clear. It was raining sideways when we left yes, the hotel. It was. Weatherford is going to change the play. You almost have to think if Bobby Bowden has a big trick up his sleeve, this might be a nice place for it. Booker. He gets three. I want to go back to the third down play because when your offense is struggling like Florida State, you need your defense to make something happen. Now watch Roger Williams, the free safety. He is going to be looking right in here at the quarterback, and he is going to have a great chance to make an interception. He sees the quarterback all the way, and for some reason he hesitates and slips and doesn't make the play. And on the sideline when he went off, Mickey Henry's got after him and said, you've got to make that play. I mean, we need to make a play to help our offense. Booker. Jeez, what pursuit. I mean, Booker's got some speed, and he can't even get to the outside without looking at three guys in his face. That looked like a younger Lorenzo Booker because one of the things Jeff Bowden said, he's worked really hard to stop dancing. You know, he, when he was younger, he used to dance in the hole too much instead of hitting right in there. And not that there was a big crease for him to hit, but dancing against these guys doesn't work. He asked that offensive line at the half, hold your blocks a little longer. Just give me a chance. That was the seventh play. Miami has thrown Florida State for a loss tonight. Tipped. Incomplete. Boy, with all the speed they've got in the secondary when the ball is tipped, you got to hold your breath if you're a Seminole fan. Well, third down and 13, you don't worry about the run. You just come after the passer. If you don't get there to get a sack, get your hands up. Baraka Atkins does a nice job of finding the quarterback's eyes, getting his hands up, and knocking the pass away. Weatherford has just been a tough night. You know, it's a tough night, but he can't panic. They're still only down a touchdown. That's I mean, right. it's, it's a seven-point game, a one-possession game, so there's no reason to panic or go in the tank right now. They just got to get a couple plays put together. Johnson, a lot of pressure on him. Johnson goes down. They're going to say no contact. Contact after the play, no flag, no whistle. 14-yard return. 
after a kick of 41. Hope you join us for the launch of Monday Night Football on ESPN. A special doubleheader for you. First at 7 o'clock Eastern. That's a special time. The Vikings take on the Redskins in Washington. Then at 10-15, the Chargers against the Raiders in Oakland. It's Johnson against Brunel, Tomlinson against Moss. Is it Monday yet? Monday Night Football on ESPN begins one week from tonight. Both games available in high definition on ESPN HD. We've talked about Miami's defense. Glowingly and rightfully so, but Florida State's defense, seven Miami offensive drives, four have ended in three and out. Jones, there's that guy again, the middle linebacker, Buster Davis, number seven. We've got Monday Night Football for you tonight, but college style from the Orange Bowl with arch rivals. Miami and Florida State and just after we said it was clear here it comes again <laughs> I could be a meteorologist that doesn't look clear does it no Myron Roll is in the ball game the much heralded recruit Wright's going to try to run takes his life in his own hands gets up to the 43 yard line Roll out of Galloway, New Jersey, the number one recruit in the country, not just in this position as a player in the secondary, but the number one recruit to many people, a brilliant student, had 1340 on his SATs, going to major in pre-med. I had 1340, but I took it twice. <laughs> had an A in every class since the ninth grade. I can't even admire that. That just makes me angry. Right under pressure against the blitz. Got it to Jenkins. Midfield. Stutter step. 40 and out of bounds. Looked like J.R. Bryant got caught up in the wash a little bit. Jenkins made the catch and then got by him for 21. When you face man-to-man -man defense, what you get with a blitz, crossing routes are very hard to cover. And you can see J.R. Bryant did get caught up in the wash on the crossing route, and Jenkins did a nice job just stutter-stepping a little bit to let it clear, and then given a yard to get about 10 extra at the end of that play. Jenkins and Leggett have had pretty good games. Mm -hmm. And that's what they needed is, is to have somebody at the wide receiver step up to be able to make plays with all the attention on the tight end also. Jones. Whoops. Uh, great pursuit by the Knowles. Jeez. Is there some speed on these defensive units? Geno Hayes again. Just came off the corner and there's no stopping him. Nicky Andrews, 23 years at Florida State. Longtime assistant, football player himself at Alabama, played for Bear Bryant. He is one of those old school coaches. I mean, he just yes, he is. Players that play for him love him though. Just just love playing for Coach Andrews. Been with Bobby Bowden forever. More pressure straight up the middle. Jones almost broke it, ran through one tackle. Buster Davis is in there again, and Davis is going to get worn out. Check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, you're talking about that great pass distribution from Kyle Wright. That's actually an attribute that he had very young and very early in his career. Last year, the players and coaches both said that they noticed that he was a, a guy that would not lock on his receiver, that he was good with his eyes. They said that that was really a, a good trait and an unusual trait for such a young quarterback to not lock on his first and primary receiver. And his strength has been throwing the ball around to many different guys. And Holly, he has thrown it very well tonight. He has managed this game beautifully. Here comes pressure until then. Guess who? That's the second time he needed to get rid of that ball and didn't do it. And Buster Davis with his second sack. And he just flies through. Well, he flies through and he anticipates and he takes great angles. I mean, he has no wasted motion, no wasted steps. When he comes on a blitz, as you see, number seven coming right through the garden tackle. I mean, somebody's got to get a hand on him at least. But great anticipation, great acceleration, and the perfect angle. 17-yard loss on the sack. And I think Buster has one of those chin straps loose. 
Wow, how did he get that off? I don't know, but there appeared to be some contact. No whistle again. Here comes Davis on the return. He's taking down at the 35-yard line, a 17-yard return after a 41-yard punt. Monroe may be taking a little time and just got it out of there. Good call on the contact or no contact. Only 2.06 to go, third quarter. The Seminoles had that brilliant streak where they went 14 years finishing in the top five, 14 years in a row, won two national championships. They haven't done it since 2001 to 2005. The win totals have dropped off, the losses increased. And Bobby Bowden right now staring another loss in the face unless he can find a way to get his offense on track. Here's Weatherford. Got away from the first man and throws. That's a heck of a play by Weatherford, but they're going to say Warren couldn't make the catch. A lot of pressure by Eric Moncour, number 94, forced Weatherford out of the pocket. Made a pretty decent throw on the run, but... Uh, not able to set his feet and make the throw. And, you know, last year, as a freshman, he struggled in this game. Seven for 24 with an interception. A little better percentage tonight, but uh, the overall productivity very similar to last year. Certainly hasn't been helped by his ground game. FSU has rushed for three yards tonight. Weatherford on a roll. Atkins trying to chase him, and he throws it out of bounds. Carr was the intended receiver, but Glenn Sharp was right there. There's just nobody open. Uh, and that looked like a misfire, a miscommunication between Carr and Weatherford. Because there was no pressure, and Weatherford looked like he thought one of these guys was going to end up going deep, and they both stopped on their routes in the same spot. And, and you, you know That's when two good. receivers are right <laughs> next to each other, somebody's wrong. You saw Buster Davis on the sideline working on that right shoe. Maybe retaping an ankle. Now it's third and ten, and third down has not been kind to the Seminole. One out of nine. Weatherford floats oh, this one under the throw catch. and the catch at the 40 yard line. <laughs> Dakota Fag kept his eye on the ball, stayed under control, and made the catch gain 27. And I'm a firm believer as a former quarterback that even when a guy's covered, Sharp has great coverage, throw that ball up and let your receiver have a chance because offensive players are better used to going up and catching the ball in a jump ball situation than a defensive player is. That was a case where the guy was not open, but you give him a chance and he makes a play. And if you catch the defender not looking back, your man's the only one with a shot at it. Weatherford's going to try it again. Carr on the outside in just tremendous defensive position by Sharp. He ran the pattern yep. better than Carr did. Let's check in for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Mike. Tiger Woods won his fifth straight PGA Tour event, matched his lowest final round of his career with an 863, ran down and passed VJ Singh to take the Deutsche Bank Championship. Ben Roethlisberger is out of the hospital after having an appendectomy. He still won't go in the Steelers opener. Charlie Batch will be the starter. And Serena Williams is done at the U.S. Open, beaten by Emily Moresmo. Sports Center after the game, ESPN News always mobile ESPN alerts if you keep your phone charged. All right, Reese. Seminoles trying to throw the ball, and it just looked well, like Warren just fell down going across the middle. But you know what? That was a bad throw by Drew Weatherford because he started to leave the pocket when he didn't have to. Watch. The protection is not going to break down, but he starts to drift and throws across his body when he really didn't need to leave the pocket. He could have stayed right there, stepped into that throw, and made a nice conversion down the field. Offensive coordinator Jeff Bowden and the son of Bobby. something that works third and ten this is their best field position in a long time yeah. if nothing else they have a chance to flip the field a little bit on Miami and let their defense play on a long field four man rush on Weatherford dumps it to Booker nice. Booker stays on his feet first down and more ten five four first and goal Seminoles 35 
five yards. Excellent job by Booker with a little hesitation, a little stutter step, throws Glenn Cook, the linebacker. Watch, little stutter step, and that's all it took to freeze Cook to get to the outside. Cook was in position to make the play, but a nifty little use of his feet by Lorenzo Booker turns a short pass and a short gain into a big play. Two big plays on this drive. First and goal with 52 seconds to go in the quarter. Well, they turned the field around. Now they've got a chance to score. Yep. Anton Smith, number six, the tailback. Weatherford wants to throw again. Dumps it to the goal line. Complete. Caught by Chris Davis. They'll mark it a foot away. Well, that's one where Chris needs to get in the end zone, I think. You know, I mean, he makes the catch. But, but why run that route to the half-yard line? You know, just take one more step and catch it and fall down for a touchdown. He comes across, just work a little deeper and get to the end zone, but still a great catch. Yes, Low it throw. was. I like the play call, too. Yeah, first down, little play action. Oh, that was close. Yes, it was. Second and goal. Quarterback keeper. You know what? I think they may review this. They, they called the, they stopped the play to review, I believe. If you go back and see the angle that we saw, it looked like the ball may have landed on the goal line and broken the plane. The previous play at the goal line is being reviewed. Yep, I think that's good. This yep. is why college replay yep. is such a great system, better than the NFL. Yep. Coach doesn't have to challenge. They review every play. Now, in that case, it looked like his knee was down before the ball got to the end zone. I agree with you. Catch. Knee down. Ball's not across the plane, I don't think, at that point. And again, now, it was ruled down on the one-yard line. It has to be indisputable evidence that to change it. Of course, they have the option of moving the ball closer to the goal line yeah. without giving him a touchdown, which I think if you're going to look at that replay, he got closer than the one-yard line, a lot closer. Well, the ball right now is marked on about the half-yard line, it appears. But you're right about the replay system. I mean, you know, they have a chance to get it right yeah. all the time. I love it. Great catch. Knee down. I don't see any way you can give him a touchdown no, I don't on, on that basis. Nope. But you got to take your hat off to Davis. That's a sensational sure catch. Is. Running full speed and going down to your ankles, being able to pick that off. Now, do you stay with the same play? The, you know, they called the play off, but they were running a quarterback sneak with Drew Weatherford. Do you go back and do the same thing, or do you try to hand the ball off off the line of scrimmage now because Miami may be anticipating the quarterback sneak? Now, here's the other question. You saw the ball come loose a little bit. Is there a question that this is a catch at all? I thought it was a catch. Yeah, I thought it was a catch. The clock showing show double zero, but there's two seconds on the clock right now. They put some time back. After review, the play stands as tall on the field. The player was ruled down. We're going to put 12 seconds on the game clock. 12 seconds on the game clock. Remember the 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 key is indisputable. Yeah video evidence and from those angles you can't make it indisputable of course Bobby Bowden is arguing hey it was indisputable from where I was standing now again the question here the ball's on the half yard line they try to quarterback sneak but the play didn't count your quarterback Drew Weatherford is 6'3 220 pounds do you try that again or do you take a chance of taking the ball off the line of scrimmage against this Miami defense They said they were putting 12 back, but the scoreboard says two.
Now does this play count? <laughs> Looks a little ragged right now, doesn't it? It's going to be third down, and that is also going to be the end of quarter. All right, now they say it's the end of the quarter, but no play. They marked the ball ready for play. Two seconds came off the clock. The quarter is over. And we'll get it straight when we come back for fourth quarter from the Orange Bowl. Welcome back to ESPN's Full Circles College Football Primetime presented by Dish Network. This is Mike Patrick along with Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe from Miami. We're at the Orange Bowl. And it is a seven-point game, but the Seminoles are driving. And they've got to go into the end zone where all the Miami fans are before the clock ran out. No fans on the other end. Surratt, the fullback, touchdown. <laughs> Great response by the Seminoles. Joe Surratt played in all 13 games last year. Did not get to carry the ball once. You know, they went quarterback sneak two times, but neither play counted, and neither play would have scored. They changed him up to start the fourth quarter with a little give to the fullback, and they got the touchdown. Ran behind Shannon Boatman and David Overmeyer off the right side. Sismatia. That's wow. good job by the holder because that snap was bobbled. Got it down and got it through. Brent Moody was the holder. For Florida State in this rivalry, the kicking game has meant heartbreak. This could be for a national championship. It's up. Yes, to the right. Eight seconds. This is the top. Lowry hit it. Point up. He missed it to the right. Here's the snap. The spot. The kick. Airborne. 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 It is. No good. Canes win. From four. Three yards away. For the win, the kick on the way. He missed it. Wide left. Bobby Bowden has been there for all of those. And, and this is the honest truth. I have seen Florida State and Miami fans, you know, really wolfing at each other right. about the rivalry. And then the words wide right come up <laughs> and the conversation is yeah, over. I know. I mean, there's no way to counter it either. And the crazy thing is it's not like it's only happened once or twice. You know, I mean, if you look back in history in games between these two teams divided by a single digit margin, Miami has won 15 of the last 16. So it has gone almost completely against Florida State when the game is close. Now, last year they won 10 to 7 and it was a botched field goal try by Miami that cost them the chance to win. And I don't think either one of these coaches just wants this thing to come down to a field goal. <laughs> Great job by the Seminoles to get back in this ball game. Here goes Johnson. Now it's Miami's turn to respond with 14-49 to go in the ball game. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, you're talking about how close these games have been over the rivalry series. We talked to Bobby Bowden. Is how did he describe it? And he said, you know, it's just like an NBA championship game. It all comes down to who misses the last shot. And guys with a score tied at 10-10, he might be right about that. Yeah. yeah, those NBA games not even worth watching until you get to the last two minutes or so, regular season anyway. See who misses at the end. It's a three-pointer. It would be a perfect analogy, wouldn't it? Player down for the Seminoles. We will check on his condition when we come back. 14:49 to go from the Orange Bowl. We're tied at 10. Back in the Orange Bowl in Miami, the injured player is Marcus Sims, able to get up and come to the sideline under his own power. He's out of Tallahassee. His father, Ernie, played for Bobby Bowden at FSU. He's a freshman running back. 
And he was just knocked out on this. Well, you can see number 35 right there is just going to have a major collision on the kickoff return. That's Daryl Sharpton, number 50. And it's good to see him walk off the field. But Ernie Sims was his brother, first round draft pick of the Detroit Lions, all ACC linebacker. Right under pressure, and down he goes. Paul Griffin, the junior college All-American who committed a big penalty in the first half, got the tackle there. And now it's starting to rain harder. Now when the rain comes again, and both of these quarterbacks, when you live and play football in the state of Florida, you're used to practicing in rain and wet footballs. Neither, none of these teams have indoor facilities. They practice in the rain, so they're used to throwing wet balls. He's got to keep your hands on it a little bit longer, the other hand. How are you with it? It wasn't bad. You know, I mean, the, the, the other thing you've got to do as a quarterback is, is you can't think about it. If you think too much about throwing a wet ball, it really gets in your head. And then you can't over-squeeze the ball. You've got to loosen up your grip a little bit, and you keep your left hand on the ball a little bit longer before you deliver. But other than that, the referees do a pretty decent job of, of keeping a dry ball in the game the best they can. Third and nine. We're under 14 minutes to go. Miami out at the 24. Javaris James, the talented freshman from Immokalee, is in at running back. His cousin Edron says this kid's a killer. And right looked like he fit it in there. Olsen couldn't come up with it. And do you get a sense that the Florida State defense kicked it up a little bit of a notch after their offense came through and scored the, the tying points? Yeah, I think momentum has shifted a little. Yeah, they got after Kyle Wright on this series, trying to find Olsen. He gets separation from Davis, but Wright is running for his life and can't throw an accurate ball on the move. Monroe will kick to Davis. That was the fifth three and out that the FSU defense has turned in tonight. High short kick. No fair catch and they'll pay the penalty for it. Knocked down after a 34 yard punt. Reddick the safety is down to make that tackle. Saturday night another great rematch for you from last year. Jim Tressel and the Buckeyes go into Austin to take on Mac Brown and the Longhorns. Last year the winner of course went to the national title. See what happens this year when two of the college football's most storied programs meet Saturday at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific on ABC Ohio State and Texas. Sims being tended to on the sideline. Good to see that he was able to get up and walk off. Now the Seminoles, can they mount another drive? Good field position again. They start from the 41. Weatherford dumps it off to Smith, and Smith makes the most of that before he's tackled by Randy Phillips. See, those are good decisions because you're having trouble running the football. So if you can't run with a lot of effectiveness, then just dump the ball off. You know, it's almost like running a screen. Look downfield. If it's not there, know where your dump off is. Hit the back, and it becomes a quasi running play. Exactly. You know, that's, that's what it amounts to. You get them out in space a little bit instead of trying to bang it between the tackles. And they gain seven. They certainly haven't done that on a running play. Weatherford to throw on second and short. Caught. Dakota Fag made the grab. Randy Phillips got turned around. Fag followed the ball and made the catch. Nice throw by Weatherford. When you're playing man to man coverage and the ball is thrown under, you have no chance as a defender. If the offensive guy can find the ball and get turned around, he can make the catch all day long. Now, did he get his foot in before he, when he had possession? You can even see his toe print inside that white line, I believe. Yep. Great adjustment to the ball. Fag three catches, 60 yards. Weatherford again. Right back to the Cody Fag. This one a little bit underthrown. And Randy Phillips this time knew where the ball yeah, was. That's exactly right. That time he saw the ball and knew it was overthrown and was in great position. Check in with Holly. Well, guys, one of the things we're noticing about Drew Weatherford is what a leader he is. Bobby Bowden calls him his natural born leader. For example, before the ACC championship.
championship game last year. They were having a team meeting, and Drew Weatherford stood up and asked the coaches to leave. He wanted to address the team by himself. He said, guys, we are not going to go out like this. I've been a Florida State fan since I was eight years old, and this is not what we're about. You guys, you're seeing some more of that leadership tonight. Holly, two for three on this drive, 14 out of 26 for the night. For 15 out of 27, Carr dives and got the first down. That's huge. Yep. And I think this is the most comfortable that Bobby Bowden has felt about his quarterback position in quite a while. Probably since Chris Wanky was there. Good protection. Drew Weatherford starting to get in a little bit of a rhythm, spreading the ball around, spreading this Miami defense out. The last year, Weatherford was a freshman, and he had to kind of play him under wraps. They had no running game. Before that, Chris Ricks was kind of up and down throughout his career. It wasn't since Chris Wanky that they were pretty solid at the quarterback position, and I think he feels that way now about Weatherford. Bobby has said this kid is a natural leader, and Smith is just blasted as he goes straight up the middle. John Beeson again. Beeson has had some monster plays off that weak side linebacker position. From here, it would be about a 42-yard field goal. They'd be a little more comfortable if they could pick up some extra yardage if they have to go for three. Second and 11. Are you conservative down here, or do you call the plays you want? Well, I think you feel Drew Weatherford's going to make a good decision right now. Go ahead and let him try to make a play. Smith goes out on the pattern as well. Weatherford! And he did make a good decision. Boy, didn't he? And a good run as well. A little bit closer. Don't force a bad throw. And now you have a third down in a very manageable situation. Nobody open downfield. Get what you can get and protect the football. You talked about the coaches challenging this team at the half. Well, if they did, they responded 151 yards in offense to only six for Miami. Huge play here, third and five. Weatherford in this half, 123 yards, three times what he had in the first half. Blitz coming. Weatherford underneath. First down and more down to the two and ton Smith. And they have worn that play out, but it keeps working. Well, and the beauty of this play is Drew Weatherford knew where the pressure was coming from. There was a blitz coming from the other side. LeVon Ponder, the safety, was coming unblocked, and Weatherford knew where that was coming from and went the other way. Now, LeVon Ponder is going to come on a blitz. Weatherford sees it, and he's just going to roll this way and get the ball to Anton Smith. He knows the pressure's coming, but he moves away from it enough to get the ball to his running back. And they're not keeping any backs in to block. It's the five guys up front who have done the job against the Miami yep. pass rush and Weatherford's mobility. Apparently, they're going to review it to see if they can tell where he stepped out of bounds. It's at least back at the six-yard line, if not further. But remember, you've got to come up with what they term indisputable video evidence to change the call on the field. Great angle to see it here. It looked like that right foot was out a couple steps ago. Out of bounds ago. near the 10. Ron Cherry, the referee. Holly, what do you have? Well, guys, I just happen to be standing right here at the sideline where he stepped out. It's quite obvious he stepped out once before the 10-yard line, just a couple of inches before, and then out again right after the 10-yard line. You can see his track marks on the white sideline here, so it's clear down here. We'll see if they catch it up in the booth. Okay. Thank you, Holly. Right there. Yeah, the left foot may have been out first. The right obviously yep. was. And then the right was out again before contact. Now, this is all supposed to be done in 60 seconds. But keep in mind, the referee can take more time. Once they make a decision, they can then talk about where the ball has to be spotted. They can talk about clock issues. That doesn't fall under the 60 seconds. 
I think Ron Cherry and his crew have done a nice job tonight. I think it's been a well officiated game when they've used the review system. They've done a nice job with it. After review, the play stands his call on the field. The runner was ruled out on the nine yard line. Yep. Oh, Ron was going to give us a little bit more information and then decided we'd already had enough. Yeah. And he's, that's another good call. And you're right. I think they've done a terrific job. So it will be first and goal from the nine. Take a look at this. These Miami defenders right here. What they're doing is they're trying to see what personnel is going to come out of the huddle on the sideline for Florida State to know whether they're going to be in a base defense, a nickel or a dime defense. And the Florida State offense kind of has Miami on their heels a little bit for, for one of the first times in the ball game. Now look at the Miami defenders. They've got their hands up in the air asking, what do you want to call on this? Weatherford fumbles the football and just covered it up. Kenny Phillips was flying toward that loose ball, and Weatherford barely got there ahead of him. And that's the second time we've seen Drew Weatherford maybe take his eyes off the football. Wasn't a bad snap, but he knew he had Greg Davis coming around. Maybe they're going to fake the reverse, and he just lost his concentration on the snap enough to not handle it. And very fortunate that he fell on it. Kenny Phillips has a little more speed than Weatherford. Yes, Weather. he does. It's all the way back at the 19-yard line. Second and goal. They cannot get a first down. Smith got outside, yeah. but the hole closed in a hurry. Kenny Phillips again. That looked like a hole he could run through for about 10 seconds. I was thinking he was going to the corner of the yep. end zone, and it just closed up so quickly by Kenny Phillips. Miami's got a lot of guys committed to the line of scrimmage. If you break through, you make a big play, but Kenny Phillips, who had 88 tackles last year as a true freshman, was not about to let Anton Smith go on the sideline. Look at that. Now, sack yardage counts in, which I don't think they should count, but that's still pretty dismal. Still impressive if you're a defensive team. Third and goal, play clock down to three. Weatherford. Incomplete. Yeah, Cody Fag covered by Sharp. Actually, I think it was Greg Carr, the taller receiver. And which, you know, we see this a lot in college football. Everybody, it seems like they have the big, tall receiver. You throw the jump ball up down around the goal line. And Glenn Sharp was there, but Greg Carr had a chance to come down with that one. Just didn't make the play. Sismasia, who was already hit from 37, will try from 33 to give the Seminoles the lead. And he's got it. Sismasia, who struggled in the Orange Bowl against Penn State, knocks this through. So I ESPN's Full Circle is presented by Dish Network. More all digital packages to choose from and more ways to save. Back at the Orange Bowl, 8.01 to go in this tremendous rivalry. Glad you've enjoyed this game. Hope you've been with us all night. On ESPN, ESPN2. I don't think we're on radio, are we? I, I know the game's on radio, but I don't think we're on. Colin Cowherd is there. I know we're not on ESPN Deportes. If we are, we've got him confused. Jenkins and Johnson deep to receive. Seminoles by three. Johnson's going to bring it out. Not a good choice. Taken down at the 14. Sports Center coming up when we're done. John Anderson and Steve Levy standing by. Tiger wins five straight. Isn't it amazing? Latest on Ben Roethlisberger and extra innings walk-off home runs.
You know how at the beginning of the third quarter we talked about the challenge was put on the Florida State offense, in particular offensive line? Well, now it's on Miami. It's on their offense and their offensive line. Three drives in the second half, only six yards. Minus 12 yards rushing here in the second half. And the, the burden is now on the Miami offense. Javaris James is the tailback and movement up front by Reggie Youngblood, the left tackle. Now, now, full start, offense, number 77. It's a five-yard penalty, still first down. He's that the sophomore making his first career start. He was the backup for Eric Winston. And look at the disparity in the numbers first and second half. Nothing for Miami. And that play was messed up from the beginning. They had a guy run on late. The tight end ran on late. Chris Zellner. Then they had movement by the left tackle. Now Zellner is the motion man. Draw play to James. Fumbled the football. Oh boy. This is not the easiest place to put a true freshman tail back in. Draw play. Quarterback's job is to put it in the belly. The running back's job is to collapse down over it. Looks like a good spot for the handoff. Javaris James is looking at the hole, looking at the blocking, and not securing the football. A little surprised Charlie Jones isn't in the game at this point if he's healthy, just for a ball security standpoint. Sure. That's a big loss, second and 19. Now they're really deep. James again. Obviously hard running, still driving his legs. Look at James all the way to the 19. He's carrying everybody with him. Maybe that's why he is in the game. Wow. That'll get a smile from Edge. Yeah, I think we just found out why. Man. Holy cow. He's a little bigger than Charlie Jones. A little faster. And he's got fresh legs, obviously, because he does not want to go down. Although he may have been down yeah, a little bit did. earlier. Yeah, they're going to have to bring this one back, I think, if they uh, get a good look at it, because that knee was down. That's what it looks like they already did. They did. Back. They did. Back to the 12. Third and 13. Right fumbles it. Buster Davis got there late after Geno Hayes made the tackle. No flag. Well, just when we said the Miami offense needed to respond to the challenge, they responded with probably their ugliest offensive possession of the night. You're right. I mean, the first play, they were discombobulated. They got the penalty. They had a fumble. They bobbled the snap there. And they've got a punt. Monroe to kick to Davis. For the last five possessions for Miami, they have gone three and out. Davis, that will be interference with the catch. The man must have an unobstructed opportunity to make the catch, whether it's a fair catch or not. My only question is, if he makes the catch, what, was he unobstructed? <laughs> I mean, it's he didn't prima facie he, evidence, he, he, isn't it? He made a clean catch. You know, they did away with the halo rule a few years ago. I understand the rule, but if a guy makes a, cl a catch clean, doesn't he have enough room to make the catch? Yes. I agree with you. Larry Coker wants that flag in a hurry. Wondering why it was thrown on that play. That is a huge break for Florida State. It puts them down at the 35-yard line. They are almost within field goal range again. And the clock is running under five minutes. You know, we talked about the clock change. Well, for Florida State, it's to their advantage now. They want as much clock to go off as they can. They've got a three-point lead. You want to keep your momentum, but you want to melt that clock, too. Booker is back in. Weatherford wants to throw. Weatherford nearly lost the football and then got rid of it. It looked like that thing was halfway out of his hand when he got it back. <laughs> And that stops the clock with 4.32 to go. I was agreeing 
mentally with your yeah. thinking. You know, and they brought Booker back in after Smith had had such success on a little swing passes. So I was pretty yeah. well convinced they were going to run the ball. Well, even if they don't run it, you know, you tell your guys, catch it, stay in bounds. Don't snap it until you get down around two or three seconds left on the play clock. Weatherford will launch for Carr. The big Great guy coverage. went up, and what a play by Sharp. He has made some sensational plays, yep. giving away a half a foot to Carr. And it's man on man. I mean, Sharp is six foot, Carr is six foot six. And you're just throwing it up and giving the receiver a chance. But as long as that defender has body position and finds the ball, he has a chance to make a play. And that's outstanding work by Glenn Sharp. Sharp is just that. Third and ten. Two plays in a row. Florida State has stopped the clock with incomplete passes. Yeah, yeah. I just think they could have really put the pressure on Miami time-wise. Weatherford. He must have heard a whistle. Well, they stopped the play. Well, the line kept coming. Gonna say Weatherford didn't call timeout. No. Somebody else did. Greg Carr, the wide receiver, called timeout. You have to guess that was coming from the bench. That is the Seminoles' first timeout of the second half. Later on Sports Center, how Tiger rallied for his fifth straight win, and why it could be weeks before Big Ben is back to 100 percent plus big home runs from baseball's big guns. Sports Center after the game. Sign up for a free 30-day trial, including calls and non-stop sports, and get a $150 signing bonus. Quentin Tarantino presents The Ultimate Adrenaline Pumping. Bone ah! Crushing. Killing. Ah! The event of the year. If you've never seen a total shot, you've never seen anything like this. The Protector. Rated R. Everywhere Friday. Anything in play we should be looking at? One stock I'm seeing some early interest in is B E N G. Trading at 16, 18. 19% 19 retracement from a recent high of 20. Looks like we've just completed the second leg of a bullish ABC up pattern. Only Power E Trade Pro gives you upgraded charting, trailing stops, and bracketed orders, all for $6.99 to $9.99 per trade, so you can be ahead of the curve. That's the way I see it. Back to you. Fergwood, you're on the goalpost truck, you're on the car, I'm on lookout. Ferg, what are you wearing? Spandex? Yeah, I got them out of my mom's drawer. It's very sexy. You think? No. Go, 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 go. This is going to look great in my yard. Bergwood? Is the strength of Allstate behind your favorite college football team? A huge crowd at the Orange Bowl has enjoyed this one. A three-point game with four minutes and 23 seconds left in the rivalry between Florida State and Miami. Huge play here, third and ten. Miami shows blitz. And here they come. Weatherford just got rid of it and threw it away. Another good decision by Weatherford. And you know what? I want to go back to something on this clock because I think Florida State could have managed the clock much better in this possession. When they got the ball, it was first and ten, and there were five minutes left on the clock. And they changed the clock, or they started the clock on the change of possession. They ran three plays and only used 44 seconds off the clock because they stopped it with three incomplete passes. Not that you play passively here. 
or or play just to protect the three point lead but certainly put some more pressure on Miami by giving them the ball back with maybe only two minutes left or two and some change on the clock and if they had gained only a few yards not necessarily a first down it might have put them in the range to get another field goal neither one of those things happened they get a good punt here yeah, from Bruno it will kick sideways and go out of bounds only a 27 yard kick but it's out of bounds at the eight that's the most important part Hope you'll join us for the launch of Monday Night Football on ESPN. We have a special doubleheader. First at 7 Eastern, the Vikings against the Redskins in Washington. Then at 10-15, the Chargers and the Raiders from Oakland. Johnson against Burrell. Or Brunel, excuse me, Tomlinson against Moss. Both games a week from tonight, and both games will be available in high definition on ESPN HD. With the new clock rules, this could be the drive they have to make something happen. And they get the ball to Sam Shields, their fastest receiver. Last year, on Miami's final drive in this ballgame, they started on their own three. And they went 19 plays all the way down to the Florida State three. Florida State got their ninth and final sack of the night on the next play, and they had to settle for a 28-yard field goal attempt that would have tied the score, and they botched the snap. So Kyle Wright has been there and done that before just a year ago. Wright is 17 out of 24. This one hit one of the blocking backs. The ball is loose. And Miami apparently got it back. And that was a potential disaster. I don't know what happened on that. I don't I'm wondering if he's, you know what? Oh, Schlager hit. thought he was under the center and he yes, snapped he did. it right into his own butt. I mean, normally you would think a center would feel if the hands were there. He had no feeling back there, and he snapped it anyway. I know I would feel it if somebody had their hands there. <laughs> what a lonely feeling for the quarterback. He's seven yards away, and the ball snapped about a foot. But what a wasted play at a critical time. Now it's third and nine. They have to hit this to keep it alive. And he threw a perfect pass to Shields, and he dropped it. Holy cow. And the coaches have told us that Sam Shields is a true freshman. All he's done is make plays every single day in practice. They didn't think this game was too big for him as a youngster. Perfect throw by Kyle Wright, and oh. Sam Shields just can't make the play. Let it get into his body. Well, you can't throw it any better than that. No, you can't. Boy, and they're going to be wolfing at him, too. Davis now back and lets it go it goes out of bounds to the 45 yard line more importantly there's only 219 left and Florida State is going to have to get a first down to really put Miami in a in a world of trouble Miami's going to have to use his timeouts on yep. this drive they have all three of them left Sports Center coming up next ESPN News will have our post game extra. Miami's used one of their timeouts right now because of the clock change. This clock would have been started on the change of possession on the ready for play, and Miami realizing that went ahead and used one of their three timeouts right now. Pretty smart move, actually. So they've stopped the clock before first down. They can stop it before second, stop it before third. But after third, it's going to run the full amount of time, depending on what happens on fourth down. So basically with this, if you're going to burn your timeouts on this drive, you're done. Yeah. It either works this time, you stop them short, or you're not going to have another shot at it. Right. Unless Florida State does what they did in the last possession and throws the ball and it's incomplete. Then I don't you, think then they're going to do that this <laughs> time. Do you? They, I don't think they will. I know this you time. didn't the last time, but I'll, I'll, I'll get you even yeah. money on this. Yeah, I think they'll run the ball and they'll make Miami burn their timeouts. And when they do get the ball back, even if they have to run three plays or four plays, they'll have, you know, very little time left to do anything. Very impressive second half for Florida yeah. State. They answered the bell. You yeah. know, I mean, they went into the locker room and Bobby Bowden said they're tougher than us in that first half. We've got to get tougher. And they did get tougher. I mean, the defense played well in the first half. They played better in the second half. And the offense picked it up. Smith back in at tailback. Rutherford changing the play. 
Smith wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage and thrown down by Tavares Gooden, number 52, and they'll use another timeout. Now the other thing you have to tell your running backs if you're Drew Weatherford in the huddle, make sure you protect the football because Miami is going to go for the ball. And it's not the first guy. It's going to be the second guy. The first guy is going to hold you up. The second guy is going to come and try to strip it. So when you get hit, just go down. Protect the ball and go to the ground. Get slow. Get off the pile. We talked about uh, both of these teams and what they might be facing if they lost this game as far as the national championship picture. Here's what Miami has remaining. Going to be a tough game at Louisville regardless of the loss to Bush. Then they're at Georgia Tech. They have Virginia Tech here and Boston College. The final game is here. So you would have to think those two games on the road would be the other two really big tests for this club as well as the Virginia Tech game. Wherever you play them, it's going to yep. be tough. I really thought that Miami's defense would be a, a shade ahead of Florida State's defense in this ball game, but uh, of course, how can you fault the Miami defense? Florida State's run the ball 22 times. They have minus one yards yeah. rushing, so they've done a pretty good job. Yes, they have. Well, Miami just did yep. them a favor. Yep. Very alert. Very alert in there by Drew Weatherford in the center. I think that's Dumaka Atkins in there at center right now for Florida State. And you tell your center, if you feel him come across, go ahead and snap. The quarterback has to be ready for that snap at any time. And there's no point in this penalty. I mean, you've no. got to assume they're going to run the ball. You've got the line of scrimmage jammed up. They're not going anywhere. But that's smart by Drew Weatherford to go on a longer Absolutely. snap count, too. Use your voice inflection. Use your snap count. And hope that a couple of those linemen will go off of your voice instead of watching the ball. And that's exactly what happened. So now if you break one for seven yards, you've got a first down. And basically, the game's going to be over. Second down. Smith is the tailback. Surrett continues to be the fullback in front of him. Smith. Nice up five. It'll be third and about three. Calais Campbell on the tackle. Good hard nose run right there. If this doesn't turn out in Miami's favor, people have to realize what a great job Larry Coker has done here with making the program more what a college football program ought to be in terms of discipline of players and where his priorities are. I know he's gotten a lot of grief for losing three games the last two years, but he's made a difference here. Yep. Third and four. It's a must stop for them and Surratt. They saved their last time out for right here, I would yep. guess. And they'll take it with one minute and 14 seconds to go. Well, the last two offensive possessions for the Hurricanes, they've been their own undoing. Bobbles, fumbles, miscommunications, bad snaps. Their defense did their job, got them the football. They just weren't able to capitalize or do anything. A drop pass there on a critical third down play by Sam Shields. Now Miami will get the ball one more time. Had to punt every possession. And that's not the Miami football we have come to expect. No. They make plays. That's been the hallmark of what they have done. And they had three ugly looking things on that last possession. Miami now out of timeouts. 114 to go. And remember with the timing rules now, it used to be you would get a first down, the clock would stop. And it didn't start again until the snap of the ball on the next down. Now it will start after the officials mark it ready for play. So time is going to burn off faster than ever in the college game. And it's going to be a little harder for the offenses to call their plays and get their formation set up before the clock runs. Well, when Miami does get the ball back, the burden will be on their wide receivers in the first half. The wide receivers accounted for 10 catches for 91 yards for Miami. Only one catch for 18 yards here in the whole second half. So Lance Leggett and Darnell Jenkins 
those are the guys who are going to have to uh, step up. The clock will also start on the change of possession after the punt. Miami coming hard, trying to get some pressure. Can't get there. And the ball will make the end zone. A break for the Hurricanes, a 37-yard punt, but a net of only 17, and they will start from the 20 with a minute five to go. Remember, they only need a field goal to tie. And like you said, the clock will start on the ready for play here, so they've got to come up and get lined up and be ready to run their first play. And as you pointed out earlier, in this series, in close games, it's been Miami yeah. with a big advantage. Really up until last year. And that was uh, a real breakthrough win for Florida State. Not only did they break a six-game losing streak, they won a close one. Clock is running. Jones is back in the tailback. You can't take the time. Jones gets the ball underneath, and they'll give up that pattern yep, all day. Yeah. Six yards of the crack won't get it done. Not even a first down, so the clock continues to run. Miami's really got to hustle. Under 40. Right. Nice defensive play. Tony Carter, freshman All-American, coming off his shoulder surgery, got a hand on that and knocked it down. Stops the clock with 33. And there is Petty with a career long of 51 yards. That means they would have to reach the 34-yard line to give him a shot at that distance. Well, right now, Kyle Wright, the, the one thing he cannot do is get a sack. I mean, he's got to get the ball out of his hands. If they get a first down, the clock will stop until they reset the chains. Underneath, too high. Intercepted. Picked off by Michael Ray Garvin on an overthrow, and that's it. Geno Hayes is the guy that's going to bring the pressure and force the bad throw by Kyle Wright. He's coming off the edge, and his quickness, we've talked about it all night. He's 211 pounds, but he's got great quickness. Watch him come clear, beats the tackle's block underneath, and his pressure forces the poor throw by Kyle Wright. Wright was throwing with his momentum, going back the other way, and it sailed high on him for the interception so it looks for all the world like for the second year in a row the Seminoles are going to win this bitter rivalry series by three points mm. tough loss for Larry Coker and for Bobby Bowden it's going to be a very pleasant trip back to Tallahassee Won a lot of games in his career, but he's really going to be happy about this one. And apparently they're reviewing this play to see if it was a catch. Well, this was a great stunt by Lawrence Timmons, number 83. That's who freed up Geno Hayes because Timmons took two blockers with him, and Hayes came unblocked. Now the question is, did Garvin have control of the ball? Sure looks like it. Sure did. Never touched the ground. He kept it off the turf. Big play for the FSU defense, which was outshone in the first half by Miami's unit, but they had a monster second half. And this is the first time that After Florida State... The play stands are ruled on the field. There was an interception. Please recite the game call to 29 seconds. 29 seconds, please. We're going to start the clock on the ready for play. The game clock will start on the ready for play. This is a kneel down for Drew Weatherford. Smiles all around for the Seminoles, though. Haven't won here since 1998. Mm. Huge for them. You can bet Bobby Bowden and company will be in the top 10 when the new ratings come out tomorrow. You, uh, California was the only team that lost in the top 10 this week. 
How about this defense? Loses four guys drafted in the first yeah. round of the NFL draft and comes out and puts out a performance like this tonight. Mickey Andrews with his fist in the air, and he deserves it. And that offense, Bobby Bowden said, you know, we got to, they're just out playing us. Challenged them at the half, and they came out and did the job. You see Holly Rowe down there on the field with uh, Coach Bowden. Let's go down to Holly. Coach, you told me at halftime your team wasn't playing tough enough. When did that change? Well, you know, we were playing tough as we could, but it wasn't tough enough. I thought they were winning the battle up front the whole first half. Now, field position was the biggest part of this game. We had field position the whole first quarter and a half. Then they punted us back to our 10, and we never had field position again until the second half, and it, it's, it was a defensive football game. Anytime these two team plays, they ain't going to make any points. You know, you forget them points. You, know. you found those points on the second half. What did Drew Weatherford do on that drive to make those well, we just made it. He made a couple of throws. We made a couple of catches. You know, we had a couple of chances. First half, we dropped the ball, and you got to make catches. How does a win like this on the road, first game of the year, answer questions about Florida State's program? You don't know how hard it is to beat Miami. I mean, I've been playing these guys 31 years. I mean, that they probably got as good defense in the country, unless it's us. All right. Well, congratulations, Coach. Thanks for your time. Thank you. We've got Drew Weatherford here, guys. Mike, back to you. All right, Holly, thank you very much. Uh, it, it's just entertaining to listen to Bobby. <laughs> He's been a great coach for so long, and what a brilliant job he did tonight bringing his team back. It looked for all the world like they were going to lose here against Miami again. The final, 13 to 10. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Sports Center is coming up next over on ESPN News, the post game expert for Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our entire crew who worked so hard for Miami. This is Mike Patrick. Good night from the Orange Bowl.